Hello and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Pick Aside Podcast. My name is Joel Moran and I'm here with River Brown, Andrew Velez, and Joe Dells. And this is now episode 367. In this episode, we are going to talk about Ty Lu calling the Clippers soft. Mm. Celtics 30 point blown lead. Are you are you worried now? Uh, Milwaukee Bucks 19 point blown lead as well. Didn't the Lakers beat the Celtics with no LeBron, no AD? You did. can't talk in this. I'm sorry. Man. <laughs> you can't. Not not this one. But I will say, I feel it like was I should pretty, be able to talk it was because pretty I was got, I got shit on for that, it's and true. they they had AD to be fair, but double overtime yeah. loss, tough. Look. It was pretty one sided looking at the topic list and seeing, hey, Celtics 30 point lead blown, but. No Milwaukee and the Lakers. I made sure to add that to the but, topic list. But I Joel, made sure. you know, they did <laughs> not let that slide. Some, no way. Some didn't want to talk about the Lakers, you know, coming back in that game. We should talk about some positivity with the Lakers, no, I think. To but, impress the victory. But Joel, they didn't want to talk about the Lakers. But of course, we had to talk about the Mavericks and the Kings. That's it. Like, that didn't. Had like, to. We didn't just need to talk about them. We had to make it a full segment. So it I had to do my due diligence. It was going to be the first damn thing. No, we were, it was going to be immediate, off the rip. Just let's talk about how good the Mavericks and how, how much they destroyed the Kings. See, it destroyed that much of its own topic. See, Mavericks fans, I'm trying to talk about y'all, man. But okay. I get, I'm getting vetoed on the show. What did you think about the Mavericks topic? Do you feel like it was topic worthy? When I first saw the topic list, I thought uh, the Clippers good to talk about. For sure. Sun, Suns losing to the Spurs, for sure. You got to talk about Have that to. a little bit. I did see a little bias going on in there talking about the Celtics. Blowing the 30 point lead is nasty. Nuts. Mavericks, it's cool. I feel like we could talk about all of them. You know, this week in the NBA definitely could have been a Mavs thing for you, though. No, I don't think so. I feel like you guys are downplaying the importance of what. It was a big game. Every game for the Clippers, the Suns, the Mavericks, the Kings. Mm -hmm. The Lakers, even thank you. Every the, West. the the Warriors, every the Rockets, yes, exactly. <laughs> every game for those teams are important, and you know the Mavericks. If you look deeper into the stats, Luke and Kyrie, when they play this year, when they're healthy, weren't on the court. The Mavericks have a sixty-seven percent win percentage, better than the LA Clippers, just behind the Timberwolves. One of the best teams in the Western Conference. Mm -hmm. So we're going to respect them like a team that could go on a deep run because that's what they are. They got Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving, and they're they're meshing right now. Okay. Is anybody? <laughs> <laughs> I was impressed by last night's win. Uh, the Kings have been playing oh, some great man. basketball. That's a team y'all couldn't beat, the Lakers. They never beat the Kings. And the Mavericks smacked up. That's exactly With why I just said that I respected it. With all, you respected the win? Last night's? Yeah. They just smoked them. Yeah, they play again tomorrow, time. right? Yeah, I mean, they you got to respect the win. The, like you said, every every game from here on out for Dallas is a must win. I guess because of my idea of what the Kings are, I'm not really like... The, the I win also, is good, I am not that not, high on the yeah. Kings. They could get bounced in the play and not make the playoffs. Uh, but I mean, listen, I they can't beat the Nuggets. They've had a couple good you wins with the Heat. Very highly. No, I, more so the fact that the Lakers have been owned by the Kings. They the also, Kings are an awesome team. I can't talk the Kings shit about got, They scored 96 I don't, I don't, last night, I don't, I don't know what you mean by Or did they break 100? The Kings are an awesome team. Like, what do you mean? He's trying to They're get back awesome in their good team. graces after shit talking them first. Like, it, holding the Kings to 96 points at home is impressive, impressive nonetheless. For sure. Oh, that's what you just searched it up? Yeah. I yeah, was they, trying to it. It was 132 to 96. It. Smoke them. You could look at it as a blowout, but holding Sacramento to under 100 points, that's that's impressive to me. But their I think it's just, a lot better. It, it's important because the Mavericks, they could go as high as four. They're, they're creeping up on the Pelicans right now who are going to be without Brandon Ingram for just a couple more games. So the Mavericks are creeping up. And um, you can make the argument for Dallas, not even they're playing great, but also the way these other teams are playing that going into the playoffs outside of Denver, they're you can the make the argument too. that I, you're super high in OKC, though. So maybe you wouldn't put them that high, um, but you can make the argument that Dallas, OKC, they've con they should be entering that conversation. I was looking at their schedule earlier. I trust Dallas a hell of a lot more than the Suns. I trust them more than the Lakers. I trust them more than kind of all of those, you know, like even right now, them and the Clippers, they go into a playoff series. Because they got a top three player. I like in the world. Dallas's why. chances in that. They got well, Luka Doncic. That's really what it is. Who's the who's been the best player in the league this year. A hundred percent. Okay. And again, LeBron James in a playoff setting. Probably second best player. Anthony Davis. LeBron James in a playoff setting at thirty nine years old is not what Luka Doncic is right now. I'm sorry. He he, he LeBron it's James seven, hasn't been great in a playoff series. Seven game series. Seven game series I take Dallas. In really? a playing game where it's like one thing, anything can happen. Okay, you, you have a chance. Yo, Riff, sure. I'm tripping. Yo, who, who would play better in the playoffs? Is you had to predict it, LeBron or Luca? Right Le now, Luca. 
But I still Come think, on. I still think LeBron's LeBron. still giving you health. LeBron that's no sweat. No, we're not matchup. going to disrespect Bron, but LeBron is so smart. And this is like this is one of the best AD? players in the league. We're talking about that's really the mismatch. Who's AD could be AD? the one to really wreck that series. Who's guarding AD? He can. He can also have a good game. Vando's healthy game. for the series. Not he, defensively, he'll be great. For is Vando going to be playing? I don't know, man. Uh, if Vando's cooked, it's going to be tough to guard anyone on Dallas again. Who's going to guard Luka and Kyrie? Yeah, in the in the world, who's going to guard Luka and Kyrie? The Mavericks are. I think that's a great matchup. Listen, I think that's a great matchup. I think so. I'm not even going to disrespect the Lakers because they've been playing some good basketball. Right, there we go. I like this. But when, when it comes to the Mavericks, you look at their schedule. It's they face the Kings, Rockets, Warriors, Hawks, Warriors, Rockets, Hornets, Heat, Pistons, close out on the Thunder. They have one of the easiest remaining schedules. I know there's some tough games in there, but you got to think that last game of the season, the Thunder might not even play their guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I think the Mavericks right now have a real chance to climb up. I don't and know, if they fighting c- for the one seed, given the fact that it's so close, maybe not. But yeah, okay, she's got a big win last year. Every yeah, game huge. can SGA's come down to the also a little West. banged up. He sat yeah. out tonight, but uh, Dagnall had some comments after the game saying basically, like, speak to him if you want to know more about the injury. <laughs> but with the, uh, the Mavericks, with the last game of the season for them, I feel like it can determine the fourth to sixth spot. I think yeah. that's how close the West can be. I don't know, man. I think they're one of the hottest teams in the league right now. Uh, that was the Mavericks' five minutes of fame, though. I just wanted to <laughs> acknowledge that. That's cool. Because I have vetoed in the topic list. I'm just, I'm just no, saying. On folks, a whole topic, I'm, we I'm, can sit here. I'll be honest. I didn't even see it in the topic list. I just saw it on the TV. Yeah, no. I feel like it's a topic because there's I so many. I saw it at 4 a.m. in the morning, and I said this oh, has oh, to Oh, this go. is something you changed like this morning yeah. or something? No, I didn't, Rob. I put them early yes. in the day. That's what I'm saying. This is yesterday. Yesterday. I didn't morning. see that shit. That's what I was saying. Maybe I don't get the updates for the notes. I guess today. Today, technically, I was looking at the topic list at 4 a.m. Oh. And, and it was, what, they, it was they, a topic they number one a topic. Days, right? The Kings? They the Mavs and Next game. We could have yeah, talked about it after Friday. that one. Yeah, because if the Mavs go 2-0 and against yeah, them, yeah, now yeah, we yeah. really give them the respect that they deserve. There's just so many subtops with the Mavericks because, you know, if... Uh, you do a whole podcast like, on if, the Mavericks. Luke, <laughs> I really could. Because if Luke I gotta gets be careful, that four seed, they, oh, we I, actually, we I get Dallas destroyed twice nah, in the yeah. comment section. Damn, they were fucking. They were killing you in uh, playback last night. I know. <laughs> we're doing playback, by the way. We've been make sure Make sure to follow us on Twitter. We've been on playback every week. I like how... Dale was just slid that right in, nice and smooth. Calm. Slid in. Gotta right. get those. Gotta get those promotion because we have been on playback recently. We have. And on playback, you guys can watch NBA games with. A, yesterday was watching the Dallas Mavericks yeah. versus the Kings. It was a massive we class. left after the third quarter because it was getting it too was ugly for us. We we had to save a, 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 a sanity. The Kings fans was watching too. Got to save their sanity. So you guys can join on playback. The link is going to be in the description down below. We're also going to talk about the Suns because they lost to the Spurs mm-hmm. without Wemby. I feel like that's a pretty big deal. And we're going to do a, a top 10 quarterback draft dynasty. So we're going to act like NFL GMs and then pick what quarterbacks we're going with moving forward. I think that should be a really fun topic. I'm with sure. it. Let's do it. How was your day? It was all right. Went to the gym, hit chest. I'm strong. Uh, did notes for the pod. Uh, also, my brother River Brown drove us here. He that, did. That was pretty big news. Uh, we have to here. talk about... Him driving with two feet and a reaction it got. Oh, it no, was, that was me who was no, both, both of y'all. Both of y'all. Both both y'all. Riv, I think Riv is fine because he's a new driver. He wouldn't know better. It really is fine for him. Honestly, and after Rookie I mistake. saw after I saw the comment section going crazy, I was like, next time I'm in the car, I'm gonna try I'm gonna do it the other way. And I forgot to. I just I had two feet the whole time. Is you comfortable with it? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. Nah, it was I could just move my foot left, right? Mm-hmm. It was matter. hard to mm-hmm. read the onslaught of comments that came your two guys' way. Saying essentially how you We're guys idiots. not drive. <laughs> <laughs> I have one of the cleanest knock on wood driving records too out of our you friends, do. which is the funny you part. Do. They should you maybe do. should try. With I'll be honest. Though, once I put my foot to the left, didn't move it ever again. Good. Yeah. yeah. Didn't move it ever. You again. get comfy. I'm there. gonna try. I'll yeah. try and see. What I think because he his car has a nice rest spot. It does. And I put my foot right there. It was just using right. I'm still time. driving with two 100%. hands. No, I'm, I'm very. I, I told him very up. until the driving test happens. Two hands, because they want you to do the the by the textbook driving. You can yeah. tell, like I'm waiting to be like a hood dude, just keep it. Yeah, you can tell because I'm real close. Riv does yeah. bring the seat up mad close. Yeah, I'm real close, tight. Has so, so much room in the back seat. That's why I moved over. That's good. Damn, I can't wait, man. Now I'm either here or I'm just one hand down low. Okay, I'll be looking up and shit, trying to figure out. I feel like I'm an out block, you know. When it's nice outside, wait, one hand down low, kind of here. Oh, I thought you okay. meant something else, right? So, like, kind of like this? <laughs> no, 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 not no. two one, hands. Just one or the other. One here. One or the other. He's not let's, let's shit say, like this, Let's say this is the wheel. Hey, hand here <laughs> or hand here. Just yeah, chill, sure. drive. Okay. And then when it's nice outside, left hand out the window, right hand driving. 
I, no. You're a menace for that. I could not do my hand outside the window. It's just he does do a movie in my head. <laughs> plays the whole time, nah, no way. I have the window down, but I don't a, think it's gonna hang a out. Movie you gotta in be my on your goonery. Just be like that. A car Ooh. just runs into my arm. Oof. All right, you can control that though. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes I mean, things also, just happen. I, I, I'm also this is usually when I'm, I'm on the highway and I'm just chilling. I, the the breeze is nice. It's a beautiful day. The windows are down. The music's blasting. I'm on my goon shit, driving, cruising. It's really what it is. Goon shit. Have you it's going to be you soon, man. It's going to be you soon. How confident are you in your driving skills right now? How would you I'm, rate yourself? I'm, I'm a seven. I feel like I'm a seven right now. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm actually extremely confident in, like, not parking. Like, extremely confident, Parked though, stuff. just moving well in the road, you know, just being alert, not crashing. And, but I feel like in Number my one. ability, I'm very confident. Like, okay. not too fast, not too slow. And the test isn't tomorrow? No. So we got some time. April 16th, my 26th birthday. Shout out. Eight in the morning will be the day I become a firm, complete man. What day of the week is that? Tuesday. Tuesday. So I will be a a complete man that day. Nice. Because this is is my only finish though. You had that uh, you had that goal early in the year. Huh? To get a license. Yes, yes. That was Mm -hmm. that was definitely one of my goals this year. New Year, that was one of my New Year's resolutions. Yes. I love that. That's tough. And Making it happen. We less than halfway through the year, and you were already accomplishing yeah, that. I'm trying to That's get tough. that for sure. You know, my last Infinity Stone, because after that, I'm a man. You are. Complete. Official. Official, one to six, top ten, top tier man. So if you were to give the Infinity Stones titles, there are six of them, I believe. You get six. Six. So you got your virginity stone. <laughs> Most definitely That's more. the first yeah. one. You got your... Uh, so this cur- is the Infinity Stones of manhood. Yes, this is a manhood Infinity Stone for sure. And uh, I've got everything else, you know, my career, Infinity Stone, mm-hmm. my looks, Infinity Stone. Most Some definitely. people don't ever get that. I That's want you to sad. know that from the tragic. bottom of my heart. Uh, I feel bad. Me too. Um, but what else? You got your, I, I've already got my fatherhood, Infinity Stone. That's four. Yeah, That's, got, okay. That's an important got, one. Yeah, I got that one early. So, um, yeah, it's really just waiting for that manhood, Infinity Stone, you know. The driver's license. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That would be five. You have one more left. I guess the sixth one would be. Wife. No, no. I feel like let's just leave it's that all man stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't. Uh, what, what would the six be? A house in Finney Stone. I got to get that uh, one. Okay, yeah, fair so enough. I got, so I got two left. Two I got two left. Yeah, I like that. So yeah, you got it. You actually cooked up so crazy right there. Yeah, yeah. You know, Infinity Stones. That's for a man. I think we all, you know, are at our different pace. I think you guys are about at four. I'm at about three right now. So I'm trying. Other to way to around, bro. Yeah. We're, so we're you're, at, yeah, we're, you're, you're, you're probably up. at three. We're, we're at three. You're oh, at yeah, four. We're trying to catch we're up. We're tied up. We don't have the fatherhood. Facts. We have everything else. Ah, facts. You have the extra one, so we have the driver. Yeah, I don't have the driver. So even. So you'd be one up on us because we all don't have the crib. If you nah. get your license, you are all you're one up on us, bro. You're Thanks. more of a man than us. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that. Oh man. Is it isn't it funny how these teams in the NBA right now kind of similar, the Clippers and the Suns, and they Pretty both feel like spot on. they're spiraling downward out of control. Now tomorrow, the Suns are facing the Denver Nuggets. It's gonna be in Phoenix, I believe. Clippers are down four to the Suns. Uh, to the Sixers. Oh, they do play tonight. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. On the road, Clippers are the down The Suns face right. the Nuggets tonight. One of the best teams in the league, if not the best team in the NBA. <laughs> they just lost to the Spurs, though. Prize Picks has some plays for us to go over for the game that's happening tonight. Let's cook. So we have Nikola Jokic, 29 and a half points. All right, more so, or so, less. so the fans are going to have to come back after this game and – Celebrate with us when we lock this one. Uh, but Nicole Jokic, more than what? 29 and a half points. Would they play? Mm. They've played the Suns. Mm. I feel like this, this gives me a 25, 15, 10 game. I don't know why. <sighs> this is giving me a Nicole Jokic I'll go just more. dominating this one. I'll go more. Give me that. I'm going, he's going to have more than that for sure. It's so tough with Jokic because he can be so passive sometimes. He can be. So I really don't know. But against the Suns, he's pretty dominant. I feel like him and Nurkic got that fake. You know, that, that, that little rivalry going on back and forth. Nurkic is out. Wow. Oh, yeah. It's up. So Bobo's playing. He rolled his ankle. <laughs> he started. Oh, man. We can go with more. Is Bobo starting? You never asked. Oh, we're doing the Bobo might be starting. We're doing the or it might be Drew Eubanks. Oof. I'll see who's starting. This will not be out to the public when the game is No, that's playing. exactly what I'm saying. When we win and you guys are watching this, you guys are going to have to come exactly. back and say, pick a side nose ball. Let's do it. Yeah. So that means if you trust us later going forward, that's on you. But don't tell bad decisions that we might be making right now. Or do and vibe with us. Nikola Jokic, 29 and a half points more or less. Uh, you guys went more. 
Are you going think, more also? I'm going to go more okay, too. Come on, come on. I couldn't find anybody for the Suns. Okay. So I guess we just got Denver right now. That's fine. Michael Porter Jr., 18 and a half points. Here's the thing with games like that, though. You do need to have two squares from both teams. One at least. You do. Uh, but Michael Porter, what was the the the, the square? It was 18 and a half points. Mm. I found He's out been why on a heater too. I found out why the Clippers are losing right now. Kawhi is 2 for 14. PG is 3 for 10. They are down by one though. The sad thing is both of them have been playing well in the month of March, but the other the other guy, unfortunately, has been lagging behind. Yeah. Oh, man, 18 and a half. Listen, Michael Porter Jr. has been playing some good basketball recently. Suns defense. Man, he's a tricky one. He is, he'll get is the volume. Tricky. He that, get it's one yeah. of those that I feel like I would never, never think to play. Dells, this might be the day. Going less. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And if Riv, if Riv is saying less, yeah. I'm in. Yeah, I, just, I, I just don't feel it today. I don't feel it. I feel like a good defensive game with 15 points. Yeah, gonna I'm going to trust your gut feeling, Riv. So I'm going to go less, too. Oh, good and Let's then, see. Just to look at his game log, 11 versus the Grizzlies last game, 12 versus the Trail Blazers, 31-26 back-to-back games. Here we go. 31 against the Knicks. This is going to be the tiebreaker right here. Or, hit or miss. And right then here. against the Mavs, 20. This he is die. two hit or miss. MPJ. I like the less, but then this could be one of those where it's a good team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just catch fire, it, MPJ. It's either we're going to be really right or really wrong. Do they have his threes? That's we a have good threes, one, man. We can talk. Okay. The threes pointers made, he is at... One and a half. It's a goblin. Done. Four. Done. It's a goblin? It's a go- Take the points no, no. out. It's a, it's a demon. I'm sorry. It's a demon? So it's demon. red? Take no, no. My yeah, bad. It's a goblin. It's okay. green. All it's right. green. Right. It's I thought goblin. you were talking about the no, red one. No, if it was red. <laughs> oh, my God. God. Holy we're still shit. here, though. Take that. Yeah, the, the, Take the points out. Grab the The threes. goblin. More. All right. Three points. Three points. Slam that. Put All right, a yeah, thousand on one that. and a half. That's two threes. Yes. MPJ could yes. definitely get, do that. It's basically a risk free bet. We got to just. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jamal Murray is not playing. Mm-hmm. So I'm guessing the starting point guard would be Reggie Jackson. 13 and a half points. He'd be wilding. That's, that's, He'd be cooking up sometimes. That's one of the few street ballers left we got, man. Okay, man. Real ones remember when he was supposed to be the franchise point guard. There's not a business. single Real ones remember square. he skipped down the lane and hit the game win on the Lakers. Yeah, I do remember that. That shit gave me a stomach ache. <laughs> That's back when we That's couldn't beat the Clippers. That's what LeBron was talking about, the one-on-five yeah. stuff. Skip through the lane. <laughs> now he's crazy. Nah, that's really when we really had nothing to do with I'll go more. Yeah, you're I feeling more I think he has a big that? game. Can I have some Suns lines, please? When he starts this year, he's averaging 16 points per game. All right, Riv, you might have fried. Let's cook something devious. Let's give, give me a foreplay. Of the 18 games that uh, he's played and he started this year, and only five of them has he's he hit less? had less than 13 and a half. All right, listen, I'm here for it. And the Suns are kind of food. I'm going to go with Reggie. We're not going to have the Suns square, there unfortunately. There really are none? Because they really, there are none on the app I don't right think they've now. announced their lineup. That probably is why. Because Bradley Beal got hurt, too. I did see that. Bitch. Something about his finger. So the last one, you was. guys are going to have to go with your own. Uh, well, actually, this won't be out by the Won't time be. that it's, you know, the game's the pick over. Pick a side trio. Yes. Just know that these are the ones that we liked. That's Love all that really them. matters. Um, so first topic of the show, you mentioned them briefly with the Clippers. Uh, they were losing a tie to the Sixers right now. They're, They're soft. Playing. That's what that Tyron Lue feel? said about the Clippers. Ty Lue said that they're soft. They lack an identity. And just to give you a backstory. Baby butt soft. Damn. It feels like in the last week, things have been brewing. Paul George has openly criticized the effort on the team. James Harden had a quote where he said, this is the first time in my career that I've been on a team with no identity. Some pretty harsh words, <laughs> and this is how Talu reacted, that we got to find our identity and that they're soft. I think it's uh, it's very interesting to see guys who went on a big stretch earlier in the year kind of hit a rough patch and kind of seem like they're giving up. I guess that's what Ty Lue was alluding to, you know, stuff like that. I think the we don't have identity right now. I've heard that so many times throughout the season, so I, I wasn't too upset about that comment. You know, defensively, they lagged off. Offensively, they got too stagnant. Ty Lue started putting out some funky lineups. So I, that comment I wasn't really aggravated about. It was really more on the, the comment Ty Lue said, you know, the way James Harden was acting within the locker room, the Norman Powell uh, caption that kind of made it a little weird. You know, so I think... Same way how you talked about the Suns and the Clippers. You, you notice a lot of these older teams, guys with vets, are starting to, like, collapse mentally and starting to struggle. And I think, you know, that that, that looming, you know, 
championship or bust thing that looming, you know, our career is coming to an end and we kind of have to, you know, get a championship or we kind of have to make a run. Then with these young teams, these exciting teams kind of like coming up, I think that stuff is starting to get to them, you know, starting to crack city years. I think the Suns and the Clippers, Clippers specifically, they have to get it together. I think with the Clippers, it's just about defensively finding that identity. You can't have one or two guys on the floor just playing defense. You know, you got to be connected one through five. I do think they switch too much throughout the year, but they've had that problem all throughout the regular season, but they don't have the bodies to do that this time. I do think sometimes they get into this tough shot taking uh, modes where they just take tough shot after tough shot. There's no motion. There's no sets. It's just iso, iso, iso. I do think they do a little bit of that too much. And they rely too much on the three ball, you know, and the shot making, which sometimes can cause funk because you have a couple rhythm players. Like Harden's a rhythm player. PG's a rhythm player. If you don't hit these, like if you, you just take tough shot after tough shot, it's hard to go through games and just continue to make that. So I think right now you have to look at the Clippers and it's really a, it's really hard to think this team can get to the Western Conference Finals at this point. You know, you got a hungry Pelicans team coming up. You got an on-fire Dallas team at the moment. You know, they could be a team that's giving you trouble in the past. Now they have Kyrie. You know, you got all these young teams, and you can't you can't give them any – like, you don't have any room for error for yourselves right now, especially with April is in a couple days. You know, the playoffs will start soon. This is a veteran team that kind of has to get it together. There are two teams right now. Post, Yeah, he's going crazy. <sighs> You just tweaked me out. God um, he did the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's been waiting for that all season because yeah, unfortunately no, hasn't God. been uh, a lot of happiness Looks for like the Warriors. Looks like you just saw a recently. ghost, bro. <laughs> my fault. Uh, one say ghost, some say something else. Yeah, correct. <laughs> I was going to say. Uh, there's been two defenses post-All-Star break worse than the Los Angeles Clippers. Uh, can we guess those two teams? Just the take Wizards. a guess. Yeah. There you go. One. Detroit. No. They've Spurs. been better. Imagine that. Spurs. The Detroit Pistons have been better than them. Post the Blazers. Time. Raptors. No, no. The Jazz. The Warriors. The Jazz. The Jazz. Oh. The Utah Jazz. Uh, when you are in that company, respectfully, Good goodness company. gracious, there is something clearly going wrong. And yet, you're right. There is no identity because when you guys were on one and you guys were playing high-level basketball, what was your identity? Oh, wow. We are a pretty great offensive trio. We have some things going on. We have some great depth on this team also. Also, we happen to have two great... Per, ter, Two great wing perimeter defenders in Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, mostly Kawhi, but that's also when he picks and chooses. He is older. But I have James Harden now. Now I don't have to worry about who my point guard is because I have one of the better facilitators in the league. Our offense looked so free-flowing. It looked like everything was together. And then suddenly now we're seeing them where they were a pretty pretty good defensive unit. They've become one of the worst in the league. And, and Tyron Lue, yet, yeah, I mean... Defense really comes with toughness, aggression, uh, just consistency. And there's been such a strong lack of consistency with the Los Angeles Clippers that, yeah, they are playing soft. Because at a certain point, you need to toughen up and lock in on the defensive side of the ball. And that can allow someone to call you soft. And also, using it as a little bit of a motivation factor. Someone calls me soft, I promise you, I'm going to put my best foot forward. So that's what a head coach should do, light a fire under their ass. I respect that. But we can also acknowledge the truth. The Los Angeles Clippers have not been a great basketball team as of late. But it's still one of those situations where, even though I, I feel myself wanting to count them out, it's a respect factor for Kawhi Leonard. He can have an off night in the regular season like he's having tonight uh, versus the Sixers. But to me, that's not going to... Just changed my opinion on, obviously, the playoffs for what he's shown me for every single time he's been in a playoff setting. That's kind of why I find myself still holding that little bit of hope there. Understanding that Paul George may be having a bad game tonight, but for the entire month of March, it's been night and day between his stats in February and this current month that we're, that we're in right now. James Harden has been the piece that has been lagging behind, specifically in the month of March. He's been he's been inefficient. He's been a liability on defense. I mean, that's been a majority of, of his tenure with the Clippers, but it's really holding them back right now where we currently stand. It, it, it really is all around a, a, a team effort that, that could just be put in a better situation if these guys would have put more effort forward. And it's, it's, it's the worst time for it to happen. I think it's scary because you mentioned the All-Star break was that number. Correct. Right? Um, I'm looking at just the last 10 games. They had the third worst defense since the All-Star break. Mm. Their second worst defense since the uh, in the last 10 games. That is the offense, like you mentioned, has still been great. Top eight. But since February 25th, so that's like a week or so after mm -hmm. the All-Star break, they've allowed less than 110 points just three times. Yeah. Can you guys guess those three games? Probably Trailblazers. Blazers were one. Um, the Jazz? Wizards? No. Detroit? 
No. Bad teams. One's wait, a good wait, team. One was I was gonna say it didn't happen recently. One's a good team. Who, was it? who did the Clippers play? Uh, Cavaliers. No. Fuck. Who was it? One West team. One East team here. Dude, remember it was 83, 80, 82. Oh, oh, Minnesota. Yes, yes Minnesota, 89, 88. That's what it was. I and love this new branch of trivia that we we're doing. <laughs> yeah, now. that's it. Who did they let less I'm than so 110 unprepared. points to? I'm uh, so unprepared for it. It was a bad, this is another bad team. Yeah. East, right? Yeah. It's got to be, um, wasn't the Bulls. Was the Bulls. Oh, shit. Was Chicago. Why did you say bad team? Uh, yeah, so you me, yeah, there we go. That's all I ask. Under can 500? We, can we go as far as say painfully mid? We're, yeah. we're good. Are they under 500? If we, no, didn't, have Zach, if, if, okay. if we okay. didn't have Zach all year, we'd be over 500. Um, yeah, for sure. But the defense has been a huge issue. Um, even having such a great offense, having the eighth best offense in the last 10 games, has resulted in a 4-6 and six record. And you mentioned James Harden, his struggles. They've been pretty apparent. Uh, he's averaging over these last eight games just 13 points, 39% from the field, 31% from three. Ugh. It's some really ugly averages. And Sorry, James, you didn't deserve that. The Clippers can get into, like Riv mentioned, like, taking very difficult shots and it's a lot of pull-ups and you're relying a lot on Kawhi and Paul George and James Harden. We've discussed, even I've discussed saying that it's good for him, especially in the playoffs because there shouldn't be as much pressure to be the second guy. But if you're the third guy, you can't be this bad. And I don't think James Harden is going to continue to be this bad. I mean, averaging 13 points and this terrible efficiency is so unlike him, even in his bad playoff moments. But he needs to be at the minimum efficient. He can't be shooting under 40% from the field and 30% from three. That's just not going to cut it, even if you are a third option. And then you're going to put more pressure on the the role players like Norman Powell and Russell Westbrook, who in the roles have been fantastic. But if you're asking them to expand their roles now in the playoffs against a great team, um, you know whether you're going to be playing Dallas or the Pelicans, whoever it might be, I don't love that situation either. Russ has been really good for them. He came back um, in this game against... Uh, Where's the most recent game? The Sixers, yeah. Uh, scored 14 points off the bench. Electric, that that typical rust that we know. So it's great that they're getting him back, but I don't know if that's going to exactly fix their defensive issues. So I mentioned it in the start of the show. If Dallas and the Clippers were going to a playoff series tomorrow, I like my chances with Dallas. That's kind of where I am with the Clippers, and it's crazy because a month, six weeks ago, whenever I said these three teams can win a championship, the Clippers were in there. And I felt pretty damn confident about it because that's how good they were playing at that time. But you fast forward you know, a month or so later, and they've been one of the more disappointing teams of the second half of the season. This doesn't even feel like the same team. 26-5 and five from December to early February. 10 and 12 since the All-Star Looked break. unstoppable, really, at that point in time. And it's because they were giving effort on defense. I think their offense hasn't been a problem right now. Mm-hmm. It's still six in offensive rating and post-All-Star breaker in the last 15 games, one of those two. Their offense has been getting shots. I think their offense has been a, l- a little bit worse than what it was early in the season. But the main thing, really, I come back to three-pointers when I look at the Clippers and what's going to hold them back the most. Number one is I don't think they have a point of attack defender. Terrence Mann has been awful defensively. James Harden is awful defensively. PG, Kawhi, they aren't point of attack defenders that are going to give that effort at the top of the screen consistently. Mm -hmm. They don't have any defender. Norman Powell comes in. He is a liability as well. He can give some effort, but for the most part, he's not going to keep up with offensive players. They don't have that type of defender in. When you beat that first point of attack defender, you are constantly stuck in rotation, which if you face a team that moves the ball around, they're eventually going to find a great shot for themselves. The other thing is, I don't think traditional center lineups work for them. Zubac, it's very apparent when a team plays with pace and space. He gets played off the court. It happened against the Pacers the other night when they had Jairus Walker in there playing some good minutes, and he was awesome. He's one of the best players on the floor that night. Eight points, I think four rebounds, seven assists. He was all over the place. And then the other center is Daniel Tice, and he is not going to give any resistance to the rim. But the problem is that when they go into small ball lineups, which is something that Talu does all the time, his solution to a problem is always going small to give the Clippers more space and you go into small ball, small ball lineups either to create advantage with speed or to match speed. They don't have speed in their small ball lineups because they're old. P.J. Tucker is, what, 38, 39 oh, years bad. old, playing the small ball five role. He cannot keep up. So he's too old. And then you have who? Amir Coffey, who he's been fine in his role, but defensively he's not a stopper either. Their small ball lineups just don't have the speed and the pace to keep up with these high-power, potent teams. 
the Clippers got some apparent issues that I don't think they're gonna fix. And then where when there's smoke, there's fire. Talu is calling out the team. James Harden already feels like he has one foot out the door. Same with Paul George. Paul George will be a free agent. Kawhi Leonard, he's never had the style of leadership where he gathers the troops. He always kind of does his own thing. Mm. But even him, I start to have some concerns about how, how often can he really take over a game? Because there haven't been many games in a regular season where I see Kawhi just flat out take over. I think he only has 13 games this season amongst the 65 that he played where he had 30 points or more. For reference, Kevin Durant, I think, has about like 25 or 26 of them. Mm. I don't see Kawhi taking over. And I know in a, in a history in the playoffs, he's the one that takes over. I just don't know if I'm expecting that. I, I feel like he is older. He's averaging 24 on great efficiency. But just if we're comparing Kawhi to the top players in the league, KD's averaging 27. Tatum's Don't averaging it. 28. Don't make SGA's that averaging 31. It's not a mistake because this team's going home in the first round. But okay, don't you think fine, this is Kawhi? Don't let it be Kawhi as the and reason Kawhi's why. I'm not saying Kawhi's going to be the reason why. I'm saying in order for the Clippers to win in the playoffs, they need Herculean efforts from Kawhi Leonard. Mm -hmm. Because James Harden, while he might not be the number one option, he has the ball. How like, many 30-point games you said? 13. He had 10. In the year he took over the Dallas series and part of the Utah series, just want to point and, that out. And he also had less games played. Definitely, yeah. But just just to point that out, he had he had sixty five games played that year, so he'll get to seventy this year. So that I don't I, that argument I could debunk that pretty easily. I could, but you watch Kawhi Leonard play; he doesn't have the same legs. If you say that, I can get with you. But that's, but that's what essentially you said. what I'm referencing to. I'm referencing to that yeah. that he He's just doesn't have the same legs. And even I though this has also been a healthier be the year. regular season, he's trying to, like Riv's he's using the word, save it all. De yes. Debunking the, the idea of, hey, I can play 70 games. I can do this. You like to think that load management's a huge part of my game. I can play this 70 while not giving 100% effort because that's kind of naturally I'm trying to cruise and make sure that when I get to the playoffs, I'm my best self. Don't get caught in him playing lackluster and allowing it to skew what you've known. I never said he's going to play lackluster. But you said that you can see a world. Did you not say that? I, I mean, never said. I never said he could. He could play lackluster. His standard in the playoffs is what averaging thirty four. Elite. Yeah, elite. Now, I'm crazy to say I don't know if Kawhi's going to average thirty four in these playoffs. Nah, no, to that's not fair, what last you're year was two games. To be fair, your initial point was I was You haven't seen many games time. that he's taken over. He's only no, had 30, he 13. He has thirteen games. But the year where he had 40 in the playoffs against Dally twice, where he had 30 against Utah, he only had 10 30-point games in 65 games. He's not, a at this point, a regular season player. He's trying to save that body for when it matters most. He, he's a Hall of Famer. Nothing in the regular season he does is going to matter. That's not the debate here. No, no my point of saying that is that... Has part but, of your reason of why... You, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Rick. Yeah, has part of your reason into why you don't know if Kawhi can reach those heights in the playoffs this year because of what he's shown you in this regular season where he's kind of been cruising? How he moves, how his body moves, the injuries that he's had over the course of his career. How about this season? I don't know if he still has the same Because last legs. year, last year, when that still was brought into question in the where you mentioned it was very few games, minimal games, he was, he was the best player insane. on the court. I just said With earlier. Kevin Durant there. I just said and earlier. And Devin Booker. Well, he, Devin oh, Booker was probably the best player in that series. I just said earlier, the number one problem is not having a point of attack defender. And I think the line of combinations, they can't play either or. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying there. that Kawhi, in order for all these mistakes to be masked, he has to be Herculean. Because I don't think this is an awesome team the way they're playing right now. And I don't know if Kawhi is going to give me that level of play to where he can carry all of the issues with the Clippers. And you guys mentioned that Harden, he's this guy that's taken a, a back seat. He's been struggling. I don't think he is. And I think the reason why the Clippers are in a funk is because even though we know Kawhi's getting the last shot, Paul George getting the second to last shot if the ball's in somebody's hands, they're the number one and two scoring options. The number one option with the player that got the ball in his hands is James Harden. He's making most of the decisions offensively. And when the head of the snake on offense that's running your offense is playing lackadaisical, is making bad passes, isn't able to get by defenders consistently, then we got an issue. I mean, that makes the offense run much less efficiently. 
the offense because I feel like Harden looks a bit slow. It's kind of running bad. And it's not even that Harden's been a bad player. Mm -hmm. It's that Harden is just not the same. The other night he had 10 plus assists. I thought he had a great game playmaking, playing his role. You look at it and it's like 14 points, you know, but that's the player he is right now. And they're expecting him to do a little bit too much. Russell Westbrook, they really needed his speed back in the lineup. But what hurts the most about James Harden is that he doesn't play defense. There were plenty of times that you watch the Clippers get a tough basket and you have four defenders back on defense and you have three offensive players coming towards you on a fast break and they're still able to score in transition when you have more bodies defensively. And whenever they cut to the closest person to that bucket letting happen, it's James Harden. Mm -hmm. It's James Harden not moving and just letting players jolt by and get transition buckets and when he is not showing effort in the half court he is kind of sagging off a couple feet away and just you know putting his hand hand up halfway that is just affecting the energy of the team and uh, that's just how bad a negative defender can make your defense if he's not giving effort and he's just not giving effort who would have thought this was james harden's that was i I commend you though because you're absolutely right like the the fact that we have to come up here and i don't want to say defend james harden but When you break down defensively why they're having these issues, a big reason is because of the James Harden trade. Um, I know you're the James Harden guy, but I just want to give you credit for that. Listen, I don't... James Harden, I've been very critical of him. You have been. Because I feel like every situation... I said the Nets, I'll give him... I'll I'll give him some leniency with the Nets because that was a disaster top to bottom. I feel like he's quit with the Houston Rockets. He quit. And with the Clippers right now, the way he's speaking about Tyron Lue is bothering me Mm -hmm. because I feel like that is something that you have to handle behind closed doors but maybe Ty Lue's not the most open coach we don't know what's going on there but if but I've seen Harden blast coaches publicly before Kevin McHale who was the coach for the Rockets in James Harden's early years he blasted him and said that you know he said that James Harden wasn't a leader and how do you expect your teammates to play defense if you don't play defense Mm -hmm. and Harden called him a clown so dating back to early in his career, Harden wasn't able to accept that criticism. So maybe he's just airing that Tyron Lue, and that's creating a negative energy around the locker room. So that, to me, I think is just a big problem there that this team can't get on the same page. Yeah, I think it's going to come down to their defense because when you look at these you know, teams that have, that have the age factor, they don't really have a, P- a POA defender. You know, defensively, they're not really locked in. So I think with the Clippers, what was their bread and butter was, of course, their offense. But when you have players like that, Norman Powell shooting an efficient rate from three ball, Mm -hmm. you have Harden, PG, Kawhi. Your offense is going to be at minimum top ten. But that defense was holding them together. They were they were connected when they were uh, had that streak. You know they played one through five. PG is still a great help defender. Kawhi is still a great help defender. I think once again you got these young firing up and coming Pelicans that are looking for your head. They've got the confidence. They beat you. I think they're 16 and one in like their last 17 games in the regular season. So they got that factor. Oh my God, Amen. They got that factor in. You know what I'm saying? Like they got that confidence, that boost. They're young, they're athletic. They're the new kids on the block ready to take over. So you got that coming behind you. And then you're also not on the same page. That's two recipes for failure. You know, so you, you know, as a Clipper, like for the Clippers, you want to get on the same page these last two weeks. You want to gear up for the playoffs. You want to win this game right now that. You are currently down six, and you haven't led since I've been checking. So you want to win this game right now, but, you know, however, whenever they need to figure it out, it needs to be fast. Yeah, and this is a game that that you probably have circled if you're a Clippers fan as, hey, we need this one. This doesn't help that they're playing like shit. Correct, but that's my whole point is at this point with the Clippers, when you're watching the Clippers, there's no easy game right now. Mm -hmm. They've made it so difficult on themselves, and that's what happens when you do show a lack of effort on the defensive side. So it'll be interesting to see how they do close out the season, understanding they looked early in the season. They got some tough games in April. Locked top three to to finish the season, and now we're at a point where, hey, is this a play-in team? Can they legitimately fall into the playing spot? Two of their next five games, they do have the Hornets and Jazz. But outside of that, you're at the Magic, at the Kings, versus the Nuggets, Cavs, two at the Suns, one more. Mm. Jazz, you have an opportunity Rockets. to get come out true, fi- on true. fire into the playoffs. Like, go in that streak, you know, win four or five of those games, be blazing going into the playoffs, and then you'll get that groove back. And as a veteran team, you should probably know that going into April, you know, but it's neither here nor there. Seven of their last 12 games are against playoff teams. Yep. And they need so it. They're going to get battle tested to end the year. Another team that a schedule like that is similar. Uh, the Phoenix Suns face 
a playoff team for the remainder of their schedule. They face the Nuggets, the Thunder, the Pelicans, the Cavaliers, the Timberwolves, brutal. the Pelicans, the Clippers, the Clippers, the Kings, and Timberwolves. Mm. It's a brutal schedule. The game they needed to win was last night against the Spurs without Victor Wembanyama, and Correct. they ended up losing. I, I watch a game back like this, and I feel like the Suns kind of played fine. Devin Booker was taking over the fourth quarter. Kevin Durant didn't have a good fourth quarter, and they missed some open shots. Eric Gordon missed an open three to start the game. But but really, I, I just feel like the, the, the Spurs. Huh? That's what you said? To what? Start the game or start the fourth? Start the fourth? Start, start the, game. the fourth. Oh, oh sorry. you said start Eric the game. Gordon. Like, wait, yeah, start the backwards. fourth. I apologize. But I was looking at it, and sometimes you just get into a game like this, a dogfight with a team that is not that good. The final shot, the Sun should have won. I, I swear to God. KD got an open three-point look should've. that he missed. We could do should have. They the got a no rebound back. No, and it's Devin so Booker different talking about the Clippers and the Suns. Right? Devin it's Booker really tried hilarious. to get a game winner. He missed the shot. He's all of course, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an embarrassing <laughs> loss. Should have won. But man, I, no Wemby. The process was nice. How about let's? The answer. process was nice. Oh, the process was nice. Yeah. yeah you know, I, the difference. The, the let me just name of the topic. No, let's answer. Let me just make this clear. No, no, no. I don't want to hear this. The Suns and the Clippers. They are going on a downward spiral. Is for two different reasons. It's for two different Yeah, but one's reasons. been doing it all year. Hold up. The Clippers, I feel like right now their biggest issue is effort. Oh, effort. Okay. Their biggest yes. issue is effort. The Suns, I feel like they give effort. I did not watch this game so and it's say a skill issue. they got no... It's not a skill issue. So then what's the problem? They lack a consistent winning formula. They, they The process isn't good. It's rebounding. It's the turnovers. And those are the biggest two. I think the turnovers are the number one. It's the fourth quarter problem. Like the fourth quarter problems, of course. You know? They lack but that a consistent <laughs> winning formula. Their process is good for the first 38 minutes. And then from minutes 38 to 47, 40, whatever it is, it's not good. So I don't disagree the, with you. So the question at hand was. And Wemby didn't play. Yeah, correct. We have can't, we can't just no, forget that No, part. he did not play. They did not their have their best player. Their best player by a god. Great Jeremy Kenny was Gap. going crazy. Didn't play. Vassal Sometimes had, had you win games and your best player doesn't play. The Celtics so do it all the time. On, just speak about how bad they are. Why okay. are you lying? He is lying. He did lie. He is lying. What is your record when Tatum doesn't play? We play well when basically everyone is out except Derek White. If wait, Derek White is out, we're like, the Spurs record with Wemby and without Wemby is bad. It does. You're bad. They're bad. Terrible both ways. Yeah. So the like, Lakers didn't they just beat the Celtics with no LeBron and AD? I'm just saying, like these games happen. Well, what are we talking they about? They do here? happen, but it's okay. Not that it's okay, because maybe we'll talk about the Celtics. But when the Celtics are winning seventy percent okay. of their games, so wait, wait, it's like if, all right, if it the happens. Clippers lose to the Sixers tonight, are you going to say, "Oh, it's okay"? I never said it was okay no, for the I, Suns. No, I'm just asking. Are you going to say it's okay? No, it's not okay. So no. why are you coming up here jolly yeah. like it should have won? I never said these it was things, okay. These things can't happen to a team that is trying to no. secure themselves in the playoffs. I agree. I agree with okay, you. Okay. I'm not disagreeing All with right. you. It didn't sound yeah. too How much. How like the, 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 the Celtics should just lost the two, because, because it's different. I, told, like, I just told Ray this. The Clippers and the Suns are two different problems to me. That's a fact. That's a fact. Effort is not the Suns' issue. It's not. It's skill. They're inconsistent and they're sloppy. It's not skill because they got a they have talent on their team. So then make so it's make not it make skill. sense to me. It's redundant. Skill. Just make it make it make sense to me. It's not skill. I, I told you already. It's the turnovers. Uh, this writer for which the has, Suns, to- Gerald Burgett, he ranked. Uh, he he wrote an excellent article breaking down the Suns' turnovers. Among 22 players who have suited up for the Suns this year, the starting five accounted for 705 of the team's 1,015 turnovers. Kevin Durant has 21% of the turnovers, 213. Nurkic has 154. Booker has 146. Beal has 108. Allen has 84. The way these turnovers are happening, though, is what is kind of annoying. And frankly, like you watch the Suns play, and this is a boneheaded issue. Lost ball turnovers account for twenty four point eight percent of the turnovers. Kevin Durant has seventy six, the fourth most lost ball turnovers in the league. So it's the ball dribbling off your ankle, your foot. It's KD uh, just going to the basket and getting swiped. That could be related to defense of dribbling off your foot. Yeah, for sure. It just the fact that KD has the most, and he's the fourth most turnover player. You know, in the league, in terms of lost ball turnovers, that is something that has been sloppy all year long. And I don't know where that issue stems from because I don't feel like Kevin Durant's always been lax a days ago with the ball. This year, he has been. Bad pass turnovers. They don't have a point guard. 55% of all of them 
that's what it accounts for. 563 offensive foul turnovers are 12.2 percent. So this team is turning the ball over mostly because of they lack bad skill. passing, and KD is so like a, a guard skill is a uh, is accounting for most of the turnovers. Would you say Kevin Durant has skill? Of course. <laughs> so what do you mean not skill? Like he you has just skill. said that more than he, half of their turnovers have come from bad passing. And KD accounts for twenty one percent of the turnovers. The playmaking skill is not there. Correct. See, that's not a point guard. Isn't good it's, at it's more. It's just ball handling. It's just sloppy okay, because right. the way that so the right, listen, bro. It's not a slight to say that what I'm saying is right. It, it, it's uh, they are losing in due part of understanding they have one of the best big three in basketballs, and at times there is a skill issue with them. And they ends up costing them the game. I don't think primarily it's due to the fact of they don't have a point guard, a true point guard, to facilitate this offense. Well, I don't think you're right. I think I they're think lacking. I think they're lacking that skill. But to say they lack skill overall, is, that, that's they don't it's lack really skill overall. in a vacuum. It's sloppy. They're sloppy. Okay, a team, I won't a get team, caught in a team semantics. with a sharp. Here, but again, okay, the, okay. no. I apologize. To interrupt you before. Go ahead. Thank you. Growth. Um, a team with a sharp defensive minded coach like Frank Vogel shouldn't be this inconsistent on defense. You know, a team with Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Bill shouldn't be this bad in the fourth quarter. There's a lot of things that shouldn't be happening with the Suns, and we just have to call it what it is. Like, this is just, this is the 2023-2024 Phoenix Suns. You know, this team may have more top-ended talent than the previous Suns teams, but I don't think they ever had an issue this bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. with those Bridges and Cam and Chris Paul, I think they've always had a... a you know, a, a cohesive running train. Like, I think they've always knew who to, who to go to, what to go to, what's their go-to move, what's their go-to set. Defensively, we're locked in, we're engaged, one through five. This team is not the same, and you can, you know, attribute it to a chemistry issue. You know, I don't think Kevin Durant and Devin Booker have that problem, with you're bringing it. Essentially, this is really a new roster. Mm -hmm. Like, this isn't the same it's as Katie last and year. Katie and Booker now play a lot bottom. of games together. Yeah, Grayson yeah. Allen is, is new here. Like, you know, Nurkic is new. Like, this Bradley is essentially, Bill. like, Bradley Bill. Royce Royce these are new players. Yeah, so, yeah. the chemistry may not be there, but... Unfortunately, we don't give a fuck. Like when you have a team with Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, the ceiling should be here. And it, you have 80 games and then you lock in for the playoffs to get here. When you have teams like Denver who are locked in one through five, when you even have teams like OKC who seem locked in one through five, you know, this Phoenix team with Kevin Durant at the age he's in, I think 36, 37, however old, uh, up there in age, you don't have much time, you know, and, yeah. I, you know, Joel. Got to give credit for this. Joel said if they flame out in the first round, they should blow it up. That's something you're going to probably have to consider because this is a team that's not – they're not going to have a lot of money. They're, they're not going to have, have a lot money. of draft picks to bring in talent. You know, and then how much do you trust rookies to play with Frank Vogel, Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Beal when their skills are redundant? You don't have a playmaking point guard. And on top of that, you're just, you're just not – like the process has been there but it has not created a consistent winning formula. You never fin they never finished the process ever. That's an interesting point with the whole blow it up thing. Mm -hmm. Because wow, this soon? That's a big decision to make. You look at the Timberwolves last year and, and they were a playing team. And now this year they're fighting for a top seed in the West. You don't think you give it one more year? I think that's different. They were they were Health, unhealthy all year, and they're young. How do you how do you move off this team? You can't. So that's why it's, even it's fin difficult. Even financially, it's difficult to move off this team. If you move off KD, you're moving off of Devin Booker. Correct. You can't move off of Bradley Beal. Grayson Allen, he's going to be eligible for a pretty big contract. Think 80 or 90 million? Probably can't they bring him back deal. either. Why are you moving on from Devin Booker automatically? I don't think he'll sit for another. I year. think if you have to Katie rebuild the team, again, the team you don't have terrible. any draft picks. You really don't have any real Devin Booker's assets gonna get outside you, of I think Booker more than KD. Kevin Durant. Grayson yes. Allen's a free agent. Is it just a foregone conclusion that Devin Booker's going to be like, get me out of here? I think they'll have to. I think it will be a full rebuild. And but if he, they're already trading Kevin Durant, you're going to get assets. You're going to get that. draft. But you're not so. going to get a lot to draft create a competitive a couple team young players. Maybe Booker. it depends on what they get back. I, I agree with you. Yeah, it just depends on because I I think if they trade KD, they're signaling they're going into a full. Like rebuild. what? If, what if I mean this wouldn't happen? But just thinking of a package, like if they went to Indiana and you could get a Jarris Walker or Benic Mather, and that's enough for Devin Booker to be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna stay out here. Like no, there's no, you no, have no, no way of competing. He's gonna say he's, no. next day, I, I gotta go. Right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Let's, it's fun. It's tough. Let, let's really try to find a way to get him back to OKC. You go and you get the three first round draft picks, probably assuming, probably a Case and Wallace. 
Yeah, I'm that's s- not enough. I'm straight. Still that's not enough. enough. That's one of the worst teams. Of the it's West. only enough if you give me J Dub. You have to add some bread in there. Or Chet. Dort has to go also. But you have to put J Dub. That's the bottom five team in the West. You think J Dub or Chet have to be in the deal at the age of 37? In order for D Book to say I'm staying, oh yes, that's what I mean. Oh, okay. that's what I, I was going to say in terms of. But if I'm if I'm OKC, okay, I'm straight. I don't need to give up either. But, of them but that's why I asked the question. I'm OKC. Okay, I'm trying to get D book. If anything, I was going to say Chet is not going nowhere. The, and and yeah, any no. trade, right? No, J Dub is going to be the one move. If the Suns I blow it up this off season, <laughs> after one year, do you think that's that a little either. bit premature? I'd move J Dub for Devin Booker. No, KD. You probably do have to run it back one more year because it just you might as well try. What's what's the what are you losing out on? I guess a year of Kevin Durant's value if he really falls off or he gets injured again. But outside of that, you still have Bradley Beal on his contract. You're not moving Devin Booker still in his yep. prime, but losing Grayson Allen is going to hurt because he's been yeah. their best role player and one of the best role players and in the he's NBA. He's shown every time Kevin Durant gets hurt, he comes back. He's better. He is better, but now so. he's going to be 37 38 at this point uh one one more turnover number um i don't think you mentioned this one but they have the highest turnover numbers in the fourth quarter 16.5 percent of offensive possessions uh worse than the league um <laughs> it, there's no there's no numbers i think you mentioned this it's terrible in the fourth the yeah. fourth quarter they're bottom five in the play-by-play era uh in terms of they're one of the 19, worst fourth quarter teams in the last NBA 27 history. years like 95 96 kevin durant Devin that's why i don't think this is an anomaly i think this is just what they are the thing is with the Suns, and I feel similarly with the Clippers, is uh, do you the Clippers' effort issues 100% for sure, but you go and you say that that's a self-inflicted thing. Mm-hmm. The Suns, I think, suffer from a, from a lot of self-inflicted things that could be fixed for whatever reason they're not being fixed, but you know, being more careful and carefree with the ball, that's something you can improve on. That's self-inflicted. Uh, getting better shots in the fourth, that's something you can improve on. I just don't know how an offense is this bad with players that talented and the spacing that talented. And the sample size is so large now that we were talking about in December and January, like you have to give them time. You have to give all the big three to be healthy, but the big three has been somewhat healthy. They have missed time. Like Beal missed some time. Booker missed some time in the last month or so. Um, When they're all on the court together, uh, they have a 64% winning percentage, which would be, Fourth right now, or excuse me, I'm looking at the wrong numbers. My apologies. I was looking at um their uh, difficulty. Hold on, let me find it. Guys, my bad, my bad. While you find Don't it, call him out. Come on, he's they've seen it. <laughs> I think what messed up the Suns was getting Bradley Bill. You could say that. I think that's what messed them up. I mean, I, I, I would rather know Bradley has been playing some good basketball in the month of March. He's averaging 18 in March. He's he, a third well, option. He's 51. Million I know, dollars. but in the month of March, he's been awesome. I don't think you, you need him. I don't think you need him. Who they move? You traded for? a bunch of seconds. They really didn't Chris have Paul. Any, Yeah. Like, would you rather have Chris Paul right now than Bradley Beal for the Suns? For that Bradley team? Bradley Beal. 100%? Yo, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you, <laughs> watching Chris, yeah, it's hard, man. I mean. Would you rather have John Collins or, or Bradley Beal for the Suns? Bradley Beal. John Collins needs a real point guard. That's that's his. Best. He does. Like, bro, it's not like Bradley Beal's bad. It's just genuinely, there's no point guard. It's not. It's they not definitely really, didn't have to get in that deal, though. It's not really how bad he is because I think he's a good player. Sixty three percent winning percentage. That would be uh, third place in the West when over. all big three are on the court together. How many games for the Suns and for the Suns? For or the who? Suns. Okay. Yeah, when they play at least five minutes, that is because there must have been a couple games in there where someone got hurt. Yeah, because I seen their record when all of them play, and it was like kind of it was five hundred, I think. Um, this one with all three of Durant, Booker, and be in the lineup for longer than five minutes. The Suns are 19 and 11. Okay. That's cool. Well, yeah. So, I, I mean, the thing with Bradley Beal, it's not just, it's not the player that he is. It's the contract you traded for. Bradley Beal's contract might be the worst contract in NBA history. If we were to vote right now and be like, what's the worst ben contract Simmons? in NBA yes. history? Ben Simmons. Bradley Beal's going to get 50 mil no, he, two okay, years so from now. The answer is Ben Simmons. Cat's going to get 60. We don't think about it. Simmons says one more year, though. Yeah. Does he have a player? He's option? had two years where he's made 80 million total. He has, I don't think he played one of those two. Bradley no, Beal is no, no. getting paid through 2027. In 2027, he's getting paid $57 million. Also, You're not telling me that Ben Simmons' contract is worse than Bradley Beal. We're only saying that because Ben Simmons. He doesn't play. Isn't, and then when well, he plays, it's like really, really. But his contract's also almost up. At the same Ben's time, you get rewarded for Beal at the minimum. He plays. Ah. Ben doesn't play. Is Bradley Beal a new Tobias Harris when it comes oh, to God. contracts? The old days. <laughs> you could say that. Or you just shit on him because of his contract? Yes, I did used to shit on because he was making $40 million and he was like a mid player. Yeah, Bradley Beal's making 48 mil. James, he's, he's mean, not a 48 Ben Simmons has made 30, 33, 35, and 37 this year. 
and he gets paid 40 mil next season. He was going to make 20 more than that? Yeah. It's not even good. You think about it. At, at the time when that contract happened, that was valid, though. It was. Oh, yeah. It I was mean, never Benjamin's valid to pay Bradley Beal. We're going to look up these PBP stats on Bradley Beal. It's, it's, we're going to. It was never valid for the Wizards to pay Bradley Beal that brand. Never. We all knew never. that. Never. We all knew that. He was that, number two in points, wasn't he, if I'm not mistaken? They felt trapped, if we're being honest. I they think felt that was the year that he missed a ton of games, actually, and they still gave it to him. I know they it was did. two they, seasons. They felt like ago. they could build the team around. It was, it was 100% the Wizards' fault. Yeah. They did it to themselves. He should have just tested the open market because it's not like they got much for him. It was when he averaged 23 a game. He that was hurt. after was the 21-22 season, yeah. Did they pay Ben after he made uh, All-NBA? Yes. Was that the year after? So he got the little the Supermax? I think so because why else would you uh, get paid that much money? Oh, man. I also think, sadly, Zach Levine's in this conversation. I was watching the Pelicans the other day, and I was like, man, would the Suns kill for a Jose Alvarado? Like that was when I, I mean, asked you can beg him for TJ McConnell. TJ McConnell cooks up. They does. Yeah. The Clippers had this. Yeah. Yeah, no. In, you know, I slept. I, I, you did sleep. I apologize. I told you that. Bro. The Clippers I also weren't expecting to continue to play this bad. I yeah. thought at some point it'd get a little bit ramped Pels up. Were, they were heating up quietly. Slowly. Oh, the Pels, yeah, they've been heating yeah, up yeah, like no, quietly, they've, they've been They've been more than heating up, especially Zion. Oh, fucking LP. It's insane. You're done. This guy was like the main advocate behind this shit. I took Zion. Yeah, you but thought you were, for a minute. I, there's nothing wrong with thinking. Sometimes there is. What is this vendetta you got against Al Prince? Nothing at all. He's a great basketball player. He's he, in his third year after 21 and he's, 10. He's a, Zion's in year four, five. He's a great basketball player. L- let's just stop right there and not put him in conversations what with What conversation Zion. is Zion in? I, I, yeah, you I'm act I'm like curious. he's like an exclusive he is, company. He is a number one he's beating a, a team. He's a top 15 player? He's way closer to top 15 than Alperen Jenkins. You're fucking good. <laughs> but that's not the point. Is he a top 15 player? I think he's top. If, if someone came up to me and said, T- Zion Williamson, top 15 in my eyes, I'm okay. I'm not losing not my really mind. That's not really answering the question, I feel is like. Is he better than Jalen Brown? Yes. <gasps> wow. He is. I didn't think you would say that. I didn't think you would say that. He is. Is he better than Trey I don't think that. What do you think, Dales? Uh, it's hard because Zion's the number one on the team. Mm. He has a lot hey, of who's a better player. Is he the number one? Listen, at times, I think Jalen. I think Jalen Brown, his two way ability, Ingram, his three Trae level Young, scoring. Trae I'm, gonna, Zion. I'm gonna say no. Ingram, CJ, and Zion all be sharing the rock on the Pelicans' offense. That's the problem. They all share. But it. Zion's usage is still so, in the, in the, the 98th percentile. But I, for me, what matters more is like how it is when a ball is in your hands. Because I feel like Zion's uses could come from a bunch of different places. Again, really the offense runs Zion the best translate. when the ball's in his hands. That's what I'm, yeah, me too. That's a high no one's going to go Because some too matchups strong. could look funky. I don't know. Minnesota. I don't know how you can just say Zion easily over Jalen Brown. It's not Jalen Brown has a playoff track record. It's not easy. I respect Jalen Brown. That's my guy. This is also you love Jalen Brown. This exactly. is the best basketball of his career. Say that, wait, Jalen Brown. Yeah. Well, well offensively, Jalen Brown just averaged twenty-seven. Hold on, hold on. Say that. Say that statement again. Huh? Say that statement again. How can you put Jalen Brown over Zion with no playoff track record? Interesting. <laughs> I know what you're about to say. SJ I'm not going to say an all word. NBA player, I'm not MVP level player. I'm not gonna say a word. I'm not gonna say wasn't word. you the one that uh, before the podcast? Uh, no, no, no. Just answer me this Zion's question. Zion's going to be an all NBA player this season. Just answer Maybe. me this question. Before a podcast, they're going to think you argue about nothing. I just want to put it. <laughs> before, before the podcast, we used to argue about SGA, and you told me there are certain players that they. Are not the rule. Mm-hmm. They are the you know. They I, I forgot what the saying is. They're they are the exception yes, to the rule. Yes, yes. And you mentioned SCN and that time all NBA players yes. is very much can yes. be the exception. Th- th- yes, I remember That's I asked you one time. I said SGA or Jimmy Butler. You said SGA in the playoffs. But one guy has the ve- like the, the 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 track record is is who, not who's comparable. more likely to go ballistic in the playoffs, Jimmy Butler or Kawhi? <laughs> wow! Wow! Watch. I'm done. <laughs> Come on, bro. Let's be serious. That's a good question. Uh, that is a good question. Is that not a good I'm, question? I, I'm pretty Are you about to disrespect Jimmy Butler? It's not even respect to Jimmy Butler. It's not even disrespectful to say Kawhi without thinking about nah, it's it. Not. It's really it's not, not it's like not. it's really. Yeah, it's a good question though. It wasn't a th- Kawhi immediately. It was Kawhi. Immediately Kawhi it's Kawhi one of those where thinking too. is it's frowned upon. Shouldn't be thinking there. Sure, Jimmy was better in the playoffs. Last year, than oh, Kawhi yeah, of course. Yeah. Kawhi you played know, two games. Kawhi played two games. <laughs> Healthy Jimmy Butler was on a rampage. We That's also first shit on Jimmy Butler after the first round. Oh, because he said so he was where, a legendary playoff performer. He was I'm also right. that pretty was damn terrible cook. in the finals. Joel, you, you're like one of like Kawhi's the three people who no, disagree Nobody with says they I still disagree. Everybody about else how bad he was in the finals. Doesn't agree with you. All right, that's why I said one of three people. 
is le- is Jimmy Butler a legendary playoff performer? Fuck no. Fuck no. Again, How you can guys it be legendary? You don't have a fucking championship. Yeah, yeah, I don't understand. Off, off the rip, that's good. Really? That? Yes, I believe oh, that. Oh, wow. Interesting. You don't have a chip. Okay, you got can't it. can't be legendary. Got it. And I'm very strict He's with had the, the inver- inferior teams in both of the 1, finals. 1,000%. I hate that for him. Me too. I do. Jimmy Even Butler went crazy in the had first round, team, bro, still after that. Beat. That's okay, um, but Dirk had, Nowitzki is also like a top 20 player. He's a great playoff performer. He's a legendary playoff performer. He didn't have a single 30-point game after the first round of the playoffs last year, Jimmy Butler. No, yeah, I know, but that's because his ankle got injured versus the And also against Joel, don't do that. Because Stop. against the Celtics, yeah, I don't like that. Against the Celtics, oh, he had thirty-five. Not, my apologies. Game one against Celtics, he had thirty-five. My bad. Uh, and, that, and, g- and game two, when it, yeah, and when 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 Tatum gets injured in game you seven, you shouldn't have been in game seven. And you shouldn't have been. But also, Joel, you we, picked the Heat. <laughs> they were up three <laughs> zero. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, you looked like the fool. I looked like. But genius. you said you shouldn't. You said you shouldn't have been in the game seven. No. But you picked the Heat to win. You thought they were gonna win. No, regardless. they should have won in four. <laughs> Genuinely, they shouldn't have went to seven. That's what I'm saying. Is that not on the Heat more than the Celtics then? If they were at up 3-0? At first it was on the Celtics because you shouldn't have went down 3-0. It should have been a competitive series from the jump. I agree. And it then was. after 3-0. You got three wins. Doesn't matter all, how you got it. It's on Miami. And honestly, game six, Derek White put back. Yeah, legend. Yeah, you live You live with shit like that. That's like, come on. Like, why is Marcus Smart even sleep. taking the shot? Make this sleep. conversation stems from Zion. You're taking Zion over Jalen Brown? Wait, what? Are you taking no, Zion over Jalen Brown? I know I'm asking you. Me? Um, I... It's not easy. It's definitely it's not, not easy. easy. It's I not. think I would take Zion though. Like if I'm picking two guys to be my team, uh, I think Zion is the more dominant physical player. I think he's the guy you scheme against a little bit. He's more difficult to scheme against. I do think he's a better playmaker than Jalen Brown. Yes. I do think. Um, J- I do think Jalen Brown's a better perimeter defender and like defender in general. He's, he's a better offensive player. He is to a degree. Versi- but I think versatility. I, I think Zion. I would take the dominance. So is Jalen Brown a better offensive player than Zion? No, he said for, he no changed I got it. it. I got it. Okay. Well, I was going to say, is he yeah, a better he offensive player than Giannis? But Giannis' offensive output is way more than Zion's. Good yeah, point. It's five yeah, points. So, so, He's a 31 know, point MVP. game. Yeah, he, he's amazing. Zion's averaging 23, 23 or 24. Mm hmm. And Jalen Brown's averaging what twenty three, twenty four. Yeah. And Jalen yeah. Brown's getting his his buckets in yeah. so many different ways. The thing with Zion is interesting is the reason why I need to see a playoffs yes. a playoff series from him is because he's one of those players that you know can get schemed up in the playoffs yes, yes. because ninety percent of his shot diet is at the basket. Mm-hmm. So if you keep him into a perimeter game and he you build a wall around him. How will he look? Yeah, I do think Jalen Brown versus Zion is a skill versus dominance thing. I do think mm-hmm. Jalen is the more skilled player by far. Mm-hmm. But I think, like, um, I would take Zion's dominance. A, a great Jaylen thing Brown in that. Jalen Brown was just an 80% free throw shooter. He'd be averaging, like, 26 this year, man. He's, he's amazing. He's at 69%. He is an amazing shooter. player. All of his shots respected. are yeah, 69. That's horrible. Since, uh, since the All-Star break, bro, it's, like, 62 or the, some the shit. The reason why the wall... I can see Zion breaking that down is because he is a really good passer. He is a really good playmaker where, yeah, they can throw the wall. They can try and limit him as a scorer, but we've seen multiple times throughout this season where teams will try and do that, but he makes the extra pass, and his team's still getting buckets around him, great spacing around him. Now that Trey Murphy's hitting, Herb Jones is now hitting at an insanely efficient rate. C.J. McCollum's having one of his best seasons. So I still feel like it can translate because the spacing there is so great. And B.I. is going to be back. I'm pretty confident in that. With Zion, what I love about his game the most is I love how he can score without the ball and yeah. how he's utilized without the ball. Uh, he makes timely plays in big-time moments. That's what I love about him the most. Listen, I think Zion is a, is a great player, and he's a, he's a star for sure. I also think Alperen Sengun is a star. I think both of them are stars. Listen, man. Go ahead, I'm with you. I think with Sengun, it's just maturity, another year of, of maturity and seeing, you know, how much stronger Super young. he, he gets. has been playing basketball his whole career. Either. They're nine and one without yeah. him. He doesn't nine and one without him. Yeah, I think that's enough. Oh, you're gonna push that? Okay. <laughs> I'm an aiming guy. Listen, Jalen Green. Listen, they should build around Jalen. You're Green. You're a Jalen Green guy. I'm an aiming Cam and Jalen Green guy. Big listen, trail. you you. Hey, listen, man. I love Singun if he's helping us win. You caught a huge W yes. with the Josh Giddy on and off stuff. Oh no, that was hilarious. <laughs> that, that W, I but, always but, knew would be but, uh, locked in. This ain't the same thing. I'm single. It's not the same thing. Tell everybody how I'm up on the aiming versus black thing. <laughs> a men Thompson versus Anthony Black. Yeah, I'm was right it now. a bet that we had or something? No, it's just you know you better career. Yeah, we had the the, the better back and career. Forth on better who's career the better is crazy. PG That's what we did. Better career is crazy. I don't think we ever did that. No, I didn't say we had a bet. I just said we had the back and forth. So who's the better point guard? You thought Black was one. I thought Anthony Damon Black. Was one. We're up. I'm up. This right now. year has shown better point guard skills than a men. Uh, uh, depending on who's watching, sure. 
The Magic are awesome with him. Now nah, I'm gonna be honest. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Amen. They're awesome with Amen. I know. Just don't know. Amen, if Amen is, is awesome. Point guard. He is. He does not really initiate offense right now. He has a long way. Anthony back barely plays. Well, he's he, also hurt. Yeah, he and also. Just Oh, he's back today? And I think he's back. I think he's just kind of out of the rotation right oh, now. Oh, out of rotation. I'm it's a fourth seed on the playoff team. Bon Carroll. Yeah. yeah. The Magic don't even need him. How many wins the Magic They have, have Jonathan Isaac. He plays that How many wins the Magic have? Um, 40, 40 plus. 43? They got a good amount of wins. 44. Yeah. yeah they're they the have, fourth seed. They, they have they 42. Dudes, yeah. 42. Oh, yeah, he's just been And Anthony Black contribu- contributed to that. In the that. West. And Anthony Black contributed to that. Uh, I'll be honest. I think them having 42 wins is more impressive. In the East is cool. Last six games, two. Yeah. They also AMPs have one of the league's best defenses. Under ten, better team. Not great, mm, but Who? they're still young. The Magic, yeah, yeah. But they're, they're, they're also they only have a better team, but because the, the guys Rockets, are just better, the Rockets, they're still young. The Rockets potentially sneaking into the play-in versus the right, Magic being no the fourth seed. There's no defending that. The That's Rockets crazy. just the development hasn't been as quick as the Magic's. Yeah, but the Magic have a better team. I was gonna say just because they. It's still the same timeline. It's just that the Magic's guys have been better quicker. Yes. Why don't you rock with right. Anthony Black, man? I like Anthony Black. You I do? just remember you were geeking about him at Summer League over him making a, a regular pass to the right. He was playing good. It's, the game just started. <laughs> <laughs> the game had just started. I can't support him? I, I, Anthony I Black. Think, yeah, I think you can. I just thought the glazing was nuts when the game just started, you know? This week in the NBA uh, slash NFL, uh, you guys can do either. Okay. Uh, for me, uh, big time news happened. Jadavion Young Clowney signing Damn. with the Carolina Panthers. Carolina Panthers making some moves this this offseason. Deontay Johnson adding a receiver to Bryce Young. I don't think people realize how good Deontay Johnson is. They don't. And I'm tired him being a Deontay Johnson guy. Nuts. It feels like it's out of nowhere. Nuts. And you know why, bro? You know why? I know why? He's trying to get back in Matt slowly, Harmon? but surely it's with Matt Bryce. Harmon. Oh, okay, okay. That was Matt Harmon. I respect stand. it. You're here. You're here. I respect it. I'm good. Slowly but surely, come back. I, I'm good. Deontay Johnson, though, I never said what. What I what negative thing I've ever said. I about just him. I never remember you saying anything really positive. about The him. only thing I said about Deontay Johnson recently it was a big us thing. Was it that was. he's the best player, the best receiver on the Steelers over George Pickens? He did say that, but didn't I say that? And you said I don't know. It might be George Pickens, or was that John? Probably was John. It probably was John. John is the Pickens guy. Um, but I think Deontay Johnson was always the best receiver there, despite the numbers. They got Robert Hunt. Uh, they got who else did they get to this on Damian Lewis? So Robert Hutt and Damian Lewis showing up that offensive line, bringing in Jadavion Clowney. They lost Brian Burns. Jadavion Clowney can honestly match the production Brian Burns is leaving behind. Uh, like ba- based on mm-hmm. how Jadavion Clowney played if last he, season, if you're getting last year Clowney short. Yes, that was also he was a career awesome. year Clowney, which is crazy because he's like thirty. That line for the Ravens was also pretty solid. Could also do he that. Has, yeah, he had some help. Uh, but at the same time, match Brian Burns. I get it. Brian Burns is, uh, I feel, uh, underwhelming considered the money that he just received from the New York Giants. But that's going to be tough, man. I don't know. I still need some some pieces over there. I have, uh, I have two this week in the NBA. All right. Tough. Um, looks like we're next in the Celtics topic, which I'm that was not cool with. But when uh, I was looking at some Bucks numbers, do you know since Doc took over, Milwaukee is five and seven in clutch games. Pre Doc with the one and only Adrian Griffin, they were eighteen and six with a plus twenty six net rating. So they have struggled in the clutch under Doc Rivers. It is unfortunate. Tough L last night against the Los Angeles Lakers. Still contending for that two seed. The Bucks are. Um, my yeah, other this week. The Lakers. <laughs> my other this week in the NBA. I have the top ten players in transition PPG. Can you guys give me those ten? No. The top ten uh, players P- in what? what? I'm sorry. PPG points per game. Oh. Why don't you just say points per game? Yeah, that I hate I'll be you honest. It just, I saw PPG. That, that really pissed me. All right, run just that run back. it back, please. For, please. <laughs> Damn, please. bro. Um, what are we doing? Oh, transition. Okay. <laughs> top 10 in top ten in transition point per game. Top 10 players in transition points per game. Thank you. Jesus. Jalen Suggs. <laughs> uh, sorry. Lock, lock in. Jalen Suggs, no. Tyrese Maxey. Tyrese Maxey, no. Zion Williamson. That's a good one. Uh, Zion, no. Giannis. Giannis, number one, seven point seven, makes sense. Uh, LeBron James, LeBron James, number six, six point seven. SGA, SGA, number four, seven flat. Steph Curry, no Steph. We do run a lot. Luka Doncic, no Luka. Kyrie Irving, no Kyrie. Come on, you know those brothers take their sweet ass time getting up. No, Kyrie. Oh, oh De'Aaron Fox. Uh, De'Aaron Fox, number three. Yes. Can you just say De'Aaron? That's Sorry. a great answer. I never, I never think about it. Sorry. Oh well. Okay. There's yeah. two, two surprising names. Everyone else, you guys. Austin get. Reeves. No, I, was, I haven't been surprised. Jordan Poole. No, 
That would have been surprising. As there's fun. still uh, Kyle Kuzma. There's three names you guys that are or four that are pretty easy. You haven't gotten no Devin Booker. Devin Booker, yes, number seven behind KD at six point five. Excuse me, behind LeBron. Mm-hmm. KD. No KD. Oh, you said behind <laughs> I, KD. I, 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 just, I didn't know if he I slipped. <laughs> uh, Maxi not up there. Donovan. Surprising. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, yes, number five. So right nice. now you guys have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're missing the final three. And you said two of them. One is oh. one is easy. The other two are going to be surprising. Okay, Grayson Allen. No. Mm. East West. Uh, you got two in the West, one in the East. CJ McCollum. No. That would have been surprising. I yeah. saw an outline of a light skin on Dell's computer where he has a picture. <laughs> there, right there. There's one that should just be. Top dog. Memories. The uh, king of transition has not played this season, and that's John Moran. That's 100%. Is he uh, up there still? Imagine. <laughs> Probably doesn't uh, qualify. Yeah. Uh, and I'm blanking. I'm trying to think we of suck. point guards that get out and run. Uh, no point guards are left on this list. Wow. Okay. What's the position? Miles Bridges. No. They're all twos. Okay. Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards. There you go. Oh, He's my God. Nine. How did we get him early? You fell off. So you I have fall off on one West, one on, East, both mid. shooting guards. Mid. Both. Uh, one is definitely not mid. Jay Nivey. Uh, no. Steph Curry. No. Okay. Well, I said that. So right. He said two. Yeah. Two is, yeah. We both got. They're so they're not mid. Good players. Both in the West. No. One is one West, one East. One is definitely not mid. The other is depending All on right. Jalen? <laughs> no. That's Malik Jaylen. Monk? Mm. No. Two guards. West. Malik Monk. Good guess. Tyler yeah. Harrell? No. No way. Uh, they're both on bad teams. Oh, Devin Vassell? No. Malik Malachi Branham? No. Lori Markinen? <laughs> no. Two. Oh, both two. <laughs> oh, Keontae George? No. Jordan Clarkson? No. I'm going to keep jealous. <laughs> Desmond Bain. <laughs> Desmond Bain, number 10. Okay. He hasn't played good. in the longest. Huh? He hasn't played in a minute. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Number 10. Okay. Uh, so one player in the East, bad team. And this is surprising? And yeah, I mean, I wouldn't. Well, maybe his game's not surprising. No, but just surprising that he's actually on this board. Bilal Kulabali. No. Kids of one brother. Yes. And Bilal's he's, a, he he's said, a tweener. But he said bad. Well, he said not that good. Show mm. some respect. He said not that good team. No, no. Not that good that. team. The players also, he's been, he's been solid, respect. but I don't think people are in love with him. You fell off, man. DeJounte? No, he said bad team. <laughs> oh, wait, I don't know. Is he counting the Hawks? <laughs> I, I, I would know. have the Bucks as a bad team. Mikael Bridges? No. Cam Thomas? No. Cam Thomas? Oh, you said Cam Thomas. Excuse I me. I apologize. Um, what, other, Thomas. what other hint can I give you guys? Bad teams. Um, I f- he's been traded this year. Should oh give it away. Goodness. Should give it away. <laughs> Still blinking. Give it away. Buddy healed. No. <laughs> Manuel damn. quickly. Tyus no. Jones. Oh, it is the Raptors. <laughs> oh, Gary. Gary, Gary Barry. Oh, <laughs> he's not a two. Uh, 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 Who do you say? Two, three. R.J. Maybe? Barrett. R.J. Barrett. That's why I went immediately to Gary Trent because I know <laughs> true, he plays the fair, two. That's fair. Maybe I screwed you. Two, that's three. Right. This RJ week in the NBA, um, I do have one. Michael Beasley was on United Sizem and Mike Miller's podcast. You know, so he said about Jason Tatum. The OGs. Nah, I didn't really watch that part. Kind of boring. Um, but I, what I did watch was. Um, I just hate when they hate on our guys. No, nah, it was just a clip, clip, clip on TikTok. And he was talking about Bam Adebayo. He said, he, nobody's ever beat him one on one. Nobody ever in the history of That's NBA, cool. which I believe him. Like, nobody has ever beat him one on one except Bam Adebayo. And he just talked about Bam's game. Like, he's a point guard in the center's body, how nobody knows how good he is, even Bam out of Bayou. But um, I th- just thought it was interesting that, like, you would think, like, he's played probably D Wade. He's probably played LeBron. You know, he's probably played Kobe or something. Like, he's played great players, and the one guy that did beat him was a center. Are you saying that Bam out of Bayou has the potential to be an all time great player? I already believed that in my eyes before. I respect the hell out of that. Um, I have one, and it is mostly a callback to. Uh, early season conversations around the Boston Celtics. Now, we understand that the Boston Celtics have been uh, the best team in basketball. Uh, One of the main conversations that we did have in one of our, let me not say one of the concerns, I won't group myself in that, uh, was the Boston Celtics head coach, Joe Mazzula. Mm. So this is going to be a would-you-rather Joe Mazzula head coaching edition because there was a t- new. there was a time where there were 22 head coaches selected over Joe Mazzula. So let's see if we keep up this same this energy. Cut down, uh, would you rather Joe Mazzula or Tom Thibodeau? I'm going with Tom Thibodeau. Nick's love, fake love. I get it. I'll go Joe. I would take Joe. All right, Nick Nurse. Nick Nurse. I'm going with Nick Nurse. Nurse. Billy Donovan. 
Joe Mazzula. JB Bickerstaff. Joe Mazzula. JB Bickerstaff. Uh, I don't hate that. Uh, Monty Williams. Joe, Joe Mazzula. <laughs> He's the worst coach in the league. <laughs> Doc Rivers. Joe Mazzula. Joe Mazzula. Joe Mazzula. Yeah, what are we yeah. doing? Rick Carlisle. What do you mean? Doc Rivers got there's like top ten. In, you I picked wins Doc all Rivers. Time. You, you said you said Doc you said Rivers ease, actually. and Nick Nurse uh, that it wasn't that much of a fall off. No, I said Nick Nurse is <laughs> he's just a younger Doc Rivers. That's all he is. <laughs> that's what I said. Doc Rick Carlisle. Carlisle. Ooh, that's that's close. I'm going with Rick Carlisle. I would Joe. take Joe, but I'm biased. championship winning head coach. Doc won. Okay. Doc has a chance. You, you got to stop. <laughs> just, just got to get. Doc Rivers is a great coach. Yeah, but you picked Joe Mazzulla. <laughs> <Get the race. laughs> I think Rick Carlisle is better than Doc Rivers. Okay, that's fine. All I right. also think I'm cool with Rick that. All right, Quinn Snyder. Ooh, I'm going with Joe Mazzulla. I'll take Mazzulla. Uh, I'll go. I'll go Joe. Okay, uh, Eric Spolstra, obviously. Oh. Eric Spolstra. Anyways. he's the best coach in the league. Yeah. This one, I'm interested. Jamal Mosley. I'll go Mosley. I don't hate that either. Moses is a really good Missoula. coach. I would take Missoula, though. Okay. I, I feel like the Magic success is more predicated on them having defensive personnel and buying in on defense, but offensively, one of the worst teams in the league. They don't got the personnel either, but, you know, I, 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 I'll go with the Joe. Coach. I think Joe's been creative on okay. offense, really creative on offense. All right, offense. Mike Malone. Mike, Mike Malone. Malone. He is a better Mike. coach. Uh, Chris Finch. Joe. I'd go with Joe Missoula. Okay. I would go with Missoula, too. too. Uh, Mark Dagnan. Dagnan. Mark. Mark Dagno. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, <laughs> Will Hardy. Say that Will. I'm going Will. Will. Okay. I'm I'm going right. Will Hardy. Hardy. I think he's the guy. Do you think that the front office comes to him and like they play decent basketball at a certain point and it's like, hey, March, April, stop. Yeah. Be bad. I think he's like, I would quiet, like I quietly have in my notes, he's like a top eight coach in the league. Bro, it's two seasons yeah. in a row this shit has happened where the Jazz play really Let's say good to high level basketball, and then come February and March, they forget how to play. Yeah, I like Will. I like Will a lot. They might the league might have to take a look into to what's going on in Utah. Uh, your guy, Steve Kerr. <laughs> right now, it might be Joe Mazzulla. Based on how Steve Kerr has been with coaching, you. <laughs> <laughs> you won't get, you won't get a Kerr. Out of, nah, out of respect, I guess you got to say Steve Kerr for a chance. We did, but uh, if you were. Uh, Give me Joe. Would but you rather? It, the thing with Kerr, he's been generationally bad this year. I still got to stand. I, I, go I was going to say, I gotta man, stand. I you go can't Kerr. switch like that. I'm about to. All right. You're obviously going to go with. Missoula. The guy that schemed against I'm you guys, you would pick crying. Joe. Yeah, I, would, I mean, our player's like 19 years old. You can say that Why he's. Why do you lie like that? <laughs> you can say that he schemed against him, but at the same time, it was mostly one, Tatum, and two, Ime playing drop until game four. I mean, who schemed against Tatum? Cook. I mean, it wasn't that hard. Hey, Andrew, you're doing a great job. Keep left. it up. That's okay. Well, that was mostly JB, but JB, no, that, that wasn't a big the issue at the No, the fair. Turnover. Good point. Uh, Tyron Lou. I'd still take Lou. Has he fallen off? He's on fraudulent watch. He is, he is on watch. Yes. I'm going with Joe Missoula right now. Ty Lue definitely is on fraud watch. I would take Missoula. Darvin Ham. Missoula. Yeah, uh, he's one Missoula. of the worst coaches in the league. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now we get into interesting, uh, interesting ones. Frank Vogel. Missoula. I would take Missoula. Missoula. Mike Brown. Mike Brown. Mike Brown. Jason Kidd. Uh, you going to let Dell's answer? Sorry, I was assuming say, I was right. I'll take <laughs> I like Brown is good. Like, if we had Brown coach. instead of Kerr, we'd be a top five seed. No trolling. <laughs> Mike Brown is a great coach. He uh, is a great I coach. I would take Missoula over I'm Jason I'm fine Kidd. with that. Jason Kidd? Oh, give me uh, Missoula. Missoula. Go on, Missoula. Uh, I just remember days where Jason Kidd was top five in the league. We do so. remember those days. Interesting. Sad days. Ime. I would take John I would Missoula. take Ime. You're lying and you know it. No, I'm not. I'm taking Ime. Ime. You're lying and you know it. I'm not. You want to you hear some numbers I pulled? We don't I care, bro. Think, you have a super team. I think I called you. I think I told <laughs> we don't, you. We don't, care, we don't care, bro. Any number. <laughs> super team, bro. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, it doesn't, we don't care, bro. Hold on. Uh, I got to find it. Sorry. <laughs> this guy's a dumb. Oh, here we go. Okay. Over the last two seasons yeah, yeah, yeah. with Joe Missoula, the Celtics have blown 17 fourth quarter leads. Do you know how many they had in one season with Emei? How much? 18. Dope. I don't think that's the reason why we were in those dog fights. We were in dog fights last year. Don't get me wrong. The reason we were in those dog fights in the playoffs, we were consistently blowing fourth quarter leads. That game seven against the Miami that Heat. Was with that was with Ime. That no, game I'm saying, seven. Was that all on Ime? Oh, I, I mean, Joe Mazzula came in and he said 17 in two years. You haven't, you haven't played. All right. Here's the thing. Here's the players thing. are better. It's a different roster. I get that. But you could look at even last year where the roster is very similar. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think a lot of y'all blown leads or like, you know, Meltdowns, I really don't think it's mainly a coach thing. I really think it's a mental thing. 
which comes within you guys. That's why I don't think even you can blame Missoula for some of your meltdowns. Like, I think generally... Even though he is terrible with time management at times. Yeah, sometimes. I think you get, like, the coach gets, like, 20. But, like, with the Celtics, for real, what I've seen over like, like it really just be a yah thing. Like, just yah. I don't disagree. Just yah break down and just don't know what to I do. I don't disagree, but that's it's a pretty staggering number. 18 well, this year doesn't count. You have a super nuts. team. Okay, even last year he was fantastic. Last year, last year he inherited Emi's baby. Ime kind of put that set in stone. Y'all were ass, and the Ime was like, nah, listen, lock in. So we're doing the Rockets right now. Them, them being ass was more so also look bad on Ime. Like, why are you, are y'all so yeah. bad? But then I mean, Ime's sacked up. He calls him like, out like, yeah, y'all bugging. Listen, Jalen, you're amazing. You are great. But this is this man's team right now. Took a man in the mirror to really. Jalen Brown doesn't that. believe this is his team. Jalen Brown makes it his team. I respect that. I love Jalen for he that. He's it, a it's, it's hilarious, like trying to compare coaches because there's so many, so many things behind the scenes we don't know. So you're in like a um, top ten coach, right? He showed me some some, some things from twenty three to ten. That's what happens when you, you It's know, not even over. We listen, still have good coaches left. Listen, Steve Kerr grabbed the super team. He turned into a top six coach ever. True. Sometimes shit happens. You know. So you're right? comparing Tatum and Steph Curry? No, good God, no! Oh, it would never be. You kind of did. I'm comparing right, team did. to team, though. You guys should. Win some championships. Steve Kerr came up with the most unstoppable play in basketball for the Warriors, though. What was it? Steph Split Curry? cuts. Oh. Split cuts. That's what it is. Yeah, it doesn't work now, so how unstoppable it is it? It still does work. Your offense isn't terrible. It's because we have Steph Curry. Of course. It takes a great player the to gravity run Gravity is, yeah. The gravity is, you know. I, don't, I mean, split. it's cool. It's dope. It's a nice play. Don't be ungrateful. I'm you great. sound or your fans sound so no, annoying. So, yeah, I won't lie. Warriors. You're so right, bro. Here's the thing. You have never seen a great coach with LeBron. Outside of spot, Mike Brown was, was the coach. Say. Of the he was good, but he, he wasn't, wasn't great. He, then. he wasn't great. He wasn't great. No, then. He wasn't. So my thing is, and y'all had a great defense though. We did, and, and you, that's what you, you, you saw. You saw um, Mike D'Antoni with James Harden, but with the Knicks, you've never really seen a great coach. Thibodeau, Thibodeau's good. He's, He's always a been great good. Coach. I wouldn't say great. But what we, does that mean, though? I don't understand. What I'm about you're to at. break it down. Mike Woodson was when you seen Steve Kerr at the height of his height. Talk about enough. Seen Kerr at the peak of his powers, and then you see this year. You have no choice but to be disappointed at what the fuck you're seeing. Mm-hmm. Because he's doing things a rookie would do. Let me ask you a question. Whose fall off has been worse? Clay His. Thompson's or Steph Curry's? Oh, excuse me. Or Steve Curry's? Clay had two knee surgeries. Mm. <laughs> Steve Kerr had a back All injury. Right. Andrew Wiggins or Steve injury. Kerr? Steve Kerr. Yeah. Andrew Wiggins had family issues. That's true, but this season. Andrew Wiggins had family Steve issues Kerr this year. Lost oh, this year too. Coaches. Huh? Steve Kerr went out and Luke Walton won like 60 games. That shit was nuts. And I think Mike Brown won some games, too. He got a job with yeah, the Kings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so he was that's a bad coach. Not for long. He was a bad like, coach. He, he was, that, sh- that situation, that was a bad that's situation. Listen, I don't think Steve Kerr deserves most of the the recognition for the Warriors dynasty. He probably deserves the least amount part amongst of it, all of the guys. Of uh-huh. But he did play a role in it. Why don't we just start talking about that? They're only a dynasty because of what Kevin Durant did. That's well, I what think it everybody is. knows that. Fact. Really? Does it feel like uh, people really credit KD at all? KD I left disagree. the Warriors and he just hasn't no. really seen success since. I think the problem is he was injured. It's unfortunate. Yeah, I, I, agree. I think Frame the problem be when KD fans act like they saved Steph Curry's legacy. Nah, that's nah. when the problem becomes that's bad. Because that's not what happened at all. Steph was going to go down as a great already. But the problem be when KD fans act like he saved the Warriors, like they wasn't going to go back to the WCF or something. To be fair, though, the way KD has talked about it's like people forgot that on those runs, he was the best player. 10 out of 10. And there there was not a debate about it, about him being the best player in those playoff runs. Yeah. Rev, it's no sight, it's the truth. Not all of them. 2018, you're saying? 2017 was pretty good. Well, I thought 2017 was when KD averaged 35. He averaged 35 both times. No, he said runs. He said oh, runs. I'm sorry, I'm thinking the finals. Runs. The whole oh. 2017 and 2018. Was that when they played the Spurs? That was when... I'm forgetting. It might the Spurs been. was 2017 because that's so when the, yeah, that's when Kawhi and, and them won 60. Was it 67? They, yeah, they went like 16 and one. Um, I don't really want to go back into the semates. I don't really care for it. Um, I think some runs stuff was better. Mostly Kevin Durant was better. But like 2019, Kevin Durant was definitely better. It was only two ever. runs really because the third one, Katie got hurt. Yeah, um, but um, Katie was the best. Steph was the most important. We do this every time, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I'm looking at they the playoffs right now. It did. That's why this conversation is. I fair. I agree. Uh, just so the first playoff run with KD, Kevin Durant averaged twenty nine. Steph averaged twenty six. KD was twenty nine, eight and five. Steph was twenty six, six and five to round it up. Um, efficiency pretty much the same. The second run, oh no, sorry, that was the second run. The first run they went on. KD averaged twenty eight, 
eight and four. Steph averaged twenty eight, six and seven. That's that first one was yeah. definitely similar. That's what I'm saying. It, but they're you know against was, the Cavs. Katie killed. Yeah, us. they were top four well, players they in played the world back to back. But in 2017, that first year, they swept the Spurs. Yeah, they, that's why Steph averaged 30, 31 in this series. No, I, yeah, yeah, that's, I, that's why I remember that eight? run. It was close. Yeah. The Knicks. Knicks put up one forty five. I was that's saying, bro. Deuce Raptors. had six threes in the first quarter. But in the finals, Katie that's averaged thirty five. Katie was no. Katie was the best player in the finals. Yeah, in the finals, finals, it was when he separated himself. Uh, last and Hawks also both won. Fuck. Ha ha. Last couple names: Taylor Jenkins. Jenkins is a really good coach. I'm going with... I'll uh, go Missoula. I'll take Missoula over here. I think Taylor Jenkins has done a lot of good stuff. I'll go Taylor. I'm going with Taylor Jenkins right now. Pop. Pop still. Greg Missoula. Popovich. Why don't we give him Steve Kerr treatment? He hasn't fallen off his He's the one that deserves it, honestly. Well, uh, we respect him. We, we got to respect him. Greg hasn't had a good team since... Shit. K- Kawhi? He did just Even with the, the DeMar teams, he got him in. Yeah. He's like the GM of that team, though. He kind of controls what they do. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess that. I mean, he, uh, what has he done that's bad? He traded DeJounte for two first. Three. Three first. He made them all NBA, all defensive. They got lucky with one B. <laughs> they I really mean, got lucky. I mean, no. they got lucky with Tim Duncan. Forget about lucky. They did. There's no luck involved because the NBA rigged the lottery so that so the Spurs are you can get him, him because they got lucky in the lottery. No, no. They no. Pick I'm up. just saying they really got lucky. Luck shit. Because they were on a downward spiral, no Should direction. Got too. And then they, yeah, that's nice. And then they got the. Most hyped up generational prospect in the history of the NBA. They got going. Tim Duncan. Yeah, they did. Willie Green or Joe Mazzula? Joe Mazzula. Joe Oof, that easy. Do we say every head coach in the league? Yeah, I, I, I named. Okay. I tried oh, to wow. Give I was going to say, we went through a lot. You know, because um, listen, they took 22 over him last that's time. That's I think true. just now we took like eight, nine. Speaking about those coaches, though, respect. I feel Hope like off the playoffs. Tom <laughs> Thibodeau won. doesn't get the respect he deserves, really. I was arguing with John earlier. I think we did a BR stream, I think, yesterday or something. Oh, I saw the comments. We're in love with John. Oh, my goodness. No, he was telling – because I asked him, what's the difference between Joe Mazzula and Tom Thibodeau? Like, who's a better coach? Because he said he would take Emei. And I'm like, why? Be- and he told me it's because Emei is overachieving with this roster. And I'm like, Tom Thibodeau's done that his, his entire career. Yes. And uh, he also has had a team that – the worst teams, I feel like. The argument that I wasn't happy with was John told me that Tom Thibodeau's not a ceiling raiser. And I was like, what team has Thibodeau had that had a chance or realistic chance to win a championship? And it hasn't been a team. But when you look at Tom Thibodeau's track record, with the Bulls, 60 win season, 50 win seasons, he had two of them, two 45-plus win seasons. So with him as head coach, he always had more than 45 wins. Derrick Rose wins MVP. Joe Kim Noah was a top five MVP candidate. I remember the first round series when they faced the Nets, who had Darren Williams, Joe Johnson, Brooke Lopez, all those guys. And the Bulls' best player was Carlos Boozer and Nate Robinson. And Nate Robinson hit game winners for that team to beat them in the it's first like round. And, and then the Timberwolves, they made the playoffs with Tom Thibodeau. And when they were healthy, they were really good. But I really feel like what he's done with the Knicks is not getting talked about enough. In three of the four seasons, we have a winning record. And every player... Guess better outside of some. Quentin Grimes has not improved, and we shipped him out. But look at how Deuce McBride has played. That's a perfect Tom Thibodeau guy coming from West Virginia, 94 feet, defending 94 feet. Deuce McBride, Isaiah Hartenstein, Josh Hart, Dante DiFincenzo, Mm -hmm. Jalen Brunson, Julius Randle, all have played the best basketball of their career with Tom Thibodeau. Yet with the athletic, when they do a ranking on the coach that you don't want to play for the most— Tom Thibodeau is always number one. Maybe it's because he's very demanding of his players, but I do feel like Tom Thibodeau deserve, deserves more recognition for the job that he's doing with the Knicks because it, it just feels like whoever comes and plays for us, they get better and they play better basketball. River, you watching? Uh... Houston might have stolen this <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah. T- Tom is a good coach. Uh, John, that's a bad arg- argument from John because Tom has definitely – you know, raised the floor for a lot of our teams from when I was a, uh, still a Chicago. His fan. arguments were, his yeah. points were like Derrick Rose good. went out with injuries. You had Noah out. I don't know why he doesn't like Tom Thibodeau. I don't know him I, saying the that he floor raises role players. Talking about Ime. No, yeah, more. he told me Ime floor Ime? raises role Plus. players more like than who? Thibodeau. Like who? Did you he ask was, him? Who? No, he was saying Derek White. Robert Williams. Der- he didn't even name Derek. Derek White's crazy. Yeah, Derek yeah, White is having nuts. a career Derek, with when with we Joe first got Zula. Derek White, he Correct. was not. He was not. That he was good. Good. Robert not. Williams. What did he? He didn't even say Marcus Smart. Yeah, like Marcus Smart would be the, the number answer. one that, name. And that's boy. what I was saying to him. Yeah. He was just like he was already good defensively. 
He turned him into an, a defensive player of the year. Not turned him into, but John obviously the system. Watch, Rob Will also, he turned up too, but it was also just his natural progression. Yeah. Like, he was such a young player. He wasn't getting burned, really, with like Brad Stevens. Hurt, to be fair. Yeah. He's dead. Yeah, I didn't got caught on casual. I he just doesn't it. like Tom Tibble. I don't, I don't know why. But don't lie. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't going to like a dude, come with some facts. You know what I'm saying? Like I rock with Tibbs, go up there and cap like McBride. Like y'all just y'all been hurt. OG's been in and out. Everyone's the lineup. Been Randall's hurt, been yeah. out. Mitch has played twenty one games. He just came back to that shot. And up. he's still producing the top defense. Like Hartenstein, you can bro him up. McBride, like he got these dudes hoop. I, John got a John's a Steelers fan. He should love Tom Thibodeau <laughs> more. <laughs> he doesn't like Mike Tomlin either. So oh, maybe, okay, he, maybe he doesn't like that Thibodeau style of head that coach. Steelers grunt vibe yeah, for like, sure. Oh man. John is casual. To finish off this show, we're going to do top 10 quarterbacks dynasty style wise. So if you ever play fantasy football dynasty, you draft, we're a draft for this year and the future. We are doing a draft. Oh, okay. Yeah, this more than 10, I thought. We, no, huh? no, I thought we were doing more than 10. No, I thought we were doing we're draft. Doing we get six picks each. So yeah, 24. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, okay. So it's a full draft dynasty draft. Well, yeah, we we do five. Top 20 is fine. 24 right, is just 24. Sure. We can yeah, get 20. We can call it 20. 20 is cool. Well, 24 the six, is a... The six shows the real ball number. Are we putting the age factor? Nah, nah. I, yeah, I feel dynasty, like we don't, so we don't want to talk about You're starting a franchise. Like These are the quarterbacks you take. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. I love how we're ending it like this because I'm starving and I want some big dicks. I'm so hungry too. So, Dell's got the wheel of names. <laughs> Mr. Dell's. Yes, sir. Let's get the order. First pick. Wheel is spinning. The wheel is spinning. I don't want this pick. Who wants first pick? It's going to be... Mr. Velez. I guess. Number one overall pick. Well, we know who that's going to be. Tua Tonga Vilo. You should take him number one. That's Is he going to go in this draft? Yes. Hell Top 20, no. maybe 19. What number two fuck? pick, Mr. River Brown. Let's do it. All right, well, we know where he's going also. Number should three pick. Take Josh Allen. Between myself and Joel. <laughs> I'll take CJ. Dells and Joel. This is a dynasty. It's right on the edge. I have the third pick. Joel, so I have the fourth pick. So uh, that means snake. I get the fifth pick. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Of course. I like that. I like that. Hold on. So. Let me let me pull up my Google Doc. Let me make sure I have my names written down. All right, let's tee up, baby. All right, hit my music, please. To start off the fantasy draft, this is top twenty quarterbacks being drafted, dynasty style. Oh yeah. Uh, so if we're the GMs of an NFL team, which quarterbacks are going off the board first? Drew, you got the first overall pick. But the first overall selection. I may not like him, but one thing more importantly than the other, I'm no fool. Patrick Mahomes, number one overall. You spent too much time on that. Pick. Also, we're doing uh, this incoming draft class as well. So Caleb, Drake, all okay. those guys do. Number one overall. Just throwing that out there. I may hate him, but one thing more than the other, I'm no fool. Patrick Mahomes, number one. Number two, I didn't have to think too much, Josh Allen. Okay. Uh, I didn't think about it. Number three, I think a little bit, but I'm cool with my guy, Lamar Jackson. <laughs> I think that's a great top three. I think to round up the top four... The fourth overall pick is going to be Mr. Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow, when he's healthy, he's leading the Bengals to the AFC Championship or the Super Bowl. Hasn't had an offensive line yet. And he is one of the elite quarterbacks in the NFL right now. You get back-to-back picks. Okay, let me ask, let me ask you a question. I want to make it a little fun here. If you had the second pick, <laughs> who would you have went? Josh Allen. And if third, you would have took? Joe Burrow. Okay, and Dells, you had second. You would have went? Josh. Third still. Oh, you had third. You went fourth. Burrow. Burrow, okay. So I got the fifth overall pick, and I feel like I got to draft him here. It, it, it's a shame because his career started out so great. The situation has dwindled around him. It's Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert is still spectacular, and hopefully the Chargers get some receivers so he could throw to next season. If only you were going to stand on business, man. Better man than me. After this top five, or excuse me, after this top, uh, yeah, after the top five, I could be convinced into Caleb Williams. Why don't you do it? But I'm not there yet. My uh, God. You're the Caleb guy. The season she, CJ Stroud just had, he would be my pick here at number six overall. Yeah, respect that. You know, Joel, I would have picked CJ with your pick. I'm not even going to say here and cap to you. I, I would have definitely did that. Um, for me here, I'm going to go... I'm gonna go Caleb. This is this is this is where I jump Caleb. I All think right. Jordan Love would be a great pick. You know, I, I was definitely thinking about that. The talent is there, but um, you know, Caleb being a rookie, Jordan being, you know, he spent a couple years in the league, so him being a little bit older, Caleb being that franchise generational player that they're talking about. So I'm gonna go Caleb at this. Pick. Knowing your guys' hatred for Tua, uh, I'm gonna be smart here and wait uh, because I'm gonna get him on my team regardless. Oh, you, he, he's you not. He shouldn't here draft. Here he shouldn't, shouldn't be drafted him. here anyway. I, I understand what you're saying. You I'm just saying. He's not in this tier. <laughs> buddy I'm sorry oh, interesting uh I will be going with CJ Stroud at I this took CJ Stroud at six. Oh, 
idiot. Oh, that's I the am. only reason I didn't take. Apologize. <laughs> why, why did I? I thought you said you took Caleb. I said I would think about oh, Caleb. Here. That's the only reason. Got so it. So he got took it. he took CJ. Yeah, you you just yes, took Caleb. Got Williams. it. Got it. Okay. So, so I I, I will be going with Jalen Hurts. A lot of conversations are being had on his name in a negative light, uh, and I think that's a little preemptive. Respect Jalen Hurts most definitely. Uh, and the next pick I will be going with. In spite of Joel, uh, I will be going with Jordan Love. Mm, okay. Dallas, you, what number are we at right now? We are at, uh, that was just the ninth overall pick. Correct. Ninth overall pick. I'm next. Nice. So, this one is tricky because you got the Trevor Lawrences of the world. You got the Bryce Youngs. I think for me with this pick, mm. it comes down to, I was naming young guys. I'm going young. Okay. I'm a young Because Bryce Young, you we know, know you're young. young. No, no, no. I'm, I'm going young. You know, we're doing a dynasty. Take it easy there. Take it easy. Not there. even close. You're, you're exactly. trying to earn your way back. It's you not, not how you close. do it. And this is not this to is say not these players it. are better than Dak Prescott, better than, you know, uh, Kirk Cousins. But Dynasty, you're thinking you want to build a team. You know, you want to build something. It comes down to three guys for me. Drake May, AR, Trevor Lawrence. I will be taking Trevor Lawrence. I do still believe in the ability and the talent that he is. I just think the situation out there in Jacksonville is a little muddy, mm -hmm. you know. But I will be taking Trevor Lawrence here. So far, run me down the picks, Dells, because I have the next pick, I believe. Yes, yeah, so we went one through ten. Patrick Mahomes. No, he has the next pick. Josh you, Allen. You have the next yeah, pick. He does I do. Has the next yeah. Pick. yeah. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Burrow, Herbert, Stroud, Caleb, Hurts, Jordan Love, Trevor Lawrence. Uh, I'm picking here at 11. Uh, I have the same, I think, conflict that you were having. I don't know if you mentioned Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray would also I be in conversation here for me. Um, but I think at 11, Folded. we haven't seen a ton from him, but I would take Anthony Richardson here. I, I You it. could make the argument, if you want to say Drake May over Anthony Richardson, they both obviously barely play in the NFL. One hasn't, one barely played. Um, I could hear you out there, but I loved Anthony Richardson as a prospect. And I guess on my team, uh, what if I have Shane Steichen too? I'd like to see what he's able to do. Anthony Richardson. They are. At this pick. Pick 11. Okay. Over <laughs> Kyler Murray. Over Kyler. Nice. Over Dak Prescott. Over Dak. Over Matthew Stafford. Yeah, it is I mean, a dynasty. Like okay. It's a little different. It's a dynasty, but when I look at quarterbacks, I think you could play for a good four to five years if you're like I'm 35. cool with Dak playing those next four or five. There's a chance I love, Matthew Stafford retires soon, soon. I love he, Dak. He, I love he, Kyler. I do think we could all agree that there might be some like Super Bowl caliber upside that's not there. You would have took the Dak over Trevor or AR? Over Trevor, yes. No, wait, hold up. No, not yeah. over Trevor, over AR, Do you yes. think AR in year, let's say we are in the dynasty, you got. You don't think AR in year three could be better at, than D Dak at 33 years old? I mean, he can, but Dak's fantastic. how much have we seen from him? Taking AR over Kyler and Dak right now, That's a good nuts. Point. To me, nuts. The potential I with yes. AR is he has off it, the charts. We, we saw it for four and wasn't even four full games. I mean, you kind of, yeah, that's good. That's a good point. You know, you kind of know what you're going to do. I don't want it to make though. it seem like I don't believe in the I talent so of AR. AR. <laughs> We're here. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. You got pick next or on? No, you're you're okay. Okay. you got two picks. You remember that, right? I got back to back picks now. Uh, the next pick I'm going with, I'm going with Kyler Murray. Yes. And Kyler Murray is going to be the pick here. Great pick. Franchise quarterback. Uh, he's only gotten hurt once, really, in his career. That's altered an entire season. But for the most part, he's been healthy. We can't forget that the last time he was healthy and he had a good team around him. He was, for a majority of the season, an MVP candidate. Mm -hmm. Oh, Kyler Murray is an exceptional quarterback. And the next pick here is going to be between Dak Prescott, Matthew Stafford, Drake May. And then I think that's when we start to have the Brock Purdy conversation in Kirk here, too, Cousins? with quarterbacks that you're going to take. take age. Kirk, two. There's a ton of quarterbacks that are up up. What about up Jared left. Goff? He's about 28, 29. Jared Goff, I think, is solid. You know, Jared Goff, he might be older than that, though. He might be like 33. Sure. No, I don't I'm think not he's mistaken. Three. Somewhere in between. Yeah. Jared Goff is definitely no 30 or 31. He is 29. Damn. Okay. Yeah, oh, you're right. Code Riv. So you got Jared Goff here. Hmm. I went Kyler Murray, next quarterback. You fucked me. I'm going with Matthew Stafford. I'm Damn going. It. I still think Matthew Stafford is not that a great Stafford, quarterback. <laughs> even though he's I older. He's nice to have that option. Yeah. I feel like where he's at right now, I could get three to four years of high level play. And good enough quarterback play to get me to a Super Bowl if he has a roster around him. That's fair. He just lost. I was upset because I was between Dak and Drake May, and I was hoping you were going to take one of them. Stafford, I think, obviously, going into this season, he's going to be a lot higher than where he gets drafted now, where I would have drafted him. But his looming retirement seems a lot sooner than some of these other guys. So pick 14, I'm between Drake May and Dak Prescott. 
Wherever you take, I'm going opposite. Yeah, so. that's tough. Yeah. That is tough. Uh, I think since I went a little risky with AR, I'll go safer here and I'll take Dak. <sighs> All right. Well, then I'll go, you know, the, the next guy in this upcoming draft. So I'll, I'll take Drake May here. I'm definitely going to build my little five. So this is Drake May over Kirk Cousins. Brock Purdy, Kirk yes. Cousins, Tua. Tua. Yes. Yes. Kirk Cousins. And Jared Goff. Kirk Cousins, the age factor for sure. Goff, I think he's a really good quarterback. I do I do really think he is, but I think he's kind of what he is at this point. I think Drake has more potential. And then Brock, I love Brock to death. I think he can definitely get better. But I do think Drake has the higher upside. So I'll go upside here. Especially with a pick like this at this round where you're not, you know, Brock is in a, is a safe pick. Kirk, I think, at his age is tough. Goff would be a safe pick. I think I'll go for the swing and for the fence type of pick. You know, I've been doing that. So mm. I'm going to continue that path. All right. Interesting. All right, so I have the back-to-back pick here. I do have some options here. Again, uh, I have – actually, this is going to be the round that I will be taking my brother because this is – we're only doing five quarterbacks, correct? Yes. All right, so my first selection will be Tua Tunga Vailoa. Uh, <laughs> and my last pick, this is the one that's going to be interesting because there are some guys that I can think between. Uh, Jaden Daniels definitely comes into mind. Uh, Brock Purdy, of course, does come into mind. Uh, and, and Bryce Young's another one that I am considering. Last name I am considering – Baker Mayfield, he had himself a fantastic season last year. Legitimate, not even just saying this, just joking. The fact that he was top six in yards, one of the the league leader in touchdowns too. He had himself a great year. I hate you so much. <laughs> Why? Because every time you feel something is funny, you'll look at others. I don't think he thinks it's funny. It's more so a respect thing. But he looks at, he, he starts smirking. He's just, <laughs> there you go. That I believe. <laughs> this is like waiting Baker. for somebody else to laugh. That's just the Baker one caught me off guard. Oh, yeah, but he's definitely last on this list. It's just more so an acknowledgement of understanding. His respect. Yeah, exactly. You're That's considering a lot of quarterbacks at this point. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you said like six names. There are some good quarterbacks to think but of. But I mean, Baker, Bayford, and Tua is in the same level. Ooh, no, there's a reason why Tua was already selected. <laughs> he picked Tua. Oh, okay. uh, the last pick between, it's going to be between Brock Purdy and Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels and the fact. Go Jaden. Go Jaden. Yeah, no, sorry, buddy. Jaden's a better prospect. Uh, he. Probably yeah. is for I mean, sure. Yeah, was the last pick of the <laughs> um, <laughs> mm, you know, I'm gonna go off what I've seen, understanding that he's done this at the highest level. I'm gonna go with Brock Purdy here. Ooh, all right. Well, you fucked me. You know, Sorry, and I'm King. tired of getting fucked on this show. Um, <laughs> I would like for Paul, somebody yeah. being on all fours. <laughs> yeah, like shit. I'm tired of getting on my knees, Holy like shit. others say. You know. <laughs> But I, I think I'm gonna go. I need I need a I need a safe pick. I need somebody who's gonna come in, be sturdy. No, like all right. So then little, go Baker. Uh, no, I'm gonna go Jared Goff. That's a good. I, one. I'm gonna go Jared Goff. I think he him right here at this pick is sound. It's solid. You know what he's gonna get out of him. He's a really good quarterback. He brings some stability. And uh, I have three, two projects. One guy who got to bounce back into Josh Allen. So I needed a safe guy. So I'm gonna go Jared Goff. Who were my picks? They were. You shouldn't have. Joe you Burrow, you took Burrow, Kyler Murray, Herbert, so you didn't write Stafford, Herbert. That's four. Yeah, somebody stole my pick. What? I was supposed to have five. You, yeah. That's well, what you're about I to have, go. I have you to go. Last. Then you go. <laughs> okay, and then we're done. <laughs> I'm just making. I'm just making sure that I get my pick. Yeah, this is my fifth pick. I'm good. The 19th overall pick. So Jaden Daniels is in strong consideration. The other quarterbacks are like Baker and Russ Gino and Gino Smith. and Carr and Trey Kirk Lance a, a and Zach thing. Wilson. Some upside Bryce guys, Young? backups. Bryce Young is still on yeah, the you board said Zach here. Zach Wilson before Bryce Young. <laughs> <laughs> not even uh, Aiden O'Connell. He said Trey Lance. Uh, Kenny Pickett. No way. I would way. be taking Jaden Daniels here, though. At yeah, 19. I would take Jaden Daniels. No Bryce. No Bryce. Respectfully. Is it Jaden older than Bryce? He might be. <laughs> He's fucking crazy. Jaden Daniels in 19. No I like guy. it. I feel like there are some quarterbacks here that. What about J.J. McCarthy, man? You think about JJ JJ? He's Are you in? I'm not thinking about him here, though. <laughs> I like JJ, though. Bryce Young is younger. There's a, a friend of mine at the gym. He is a Michigan fan, and him and I, that's where we really bond. He bet me $10,000. What? $10,000 that JJ McCarthy will be a pro bowler in his second season. Will he actually pay you if he loses? No. Oh, okay. uh, but he loves this man and really believes in him. And I, the constant thing I say about JJ is listen, he's athletic. He has a strong arm, but his accuracy is still not that good. It's pretty good from the intermediate, that 10 to 20 yards. He's pretty accurate there, but that deep ball, he still needs to find his touch there. Uh, that was an interesting conversation I had, but I'd, I'd figure I'd shout him out here. So now, Mr. Does, 19th pick, you took Jaden Daniels. So Jaden McCarthy's on the board. So Jaden over Bryce Young long term. That's what you're telling me. That's what They're I both heard. question marks, I'll be honest. 
I like Jaden. So you took the I like taller question mark? I took uh, the more athletic, I think, Older. more physically gifted quarterback. Okay. I would have preferred the younger I guy. I think this last pick, it's Kirk Cousins, it's Geno Smith, Bryson. We get into that territory. Will Levis comes into play because he's a rookie. You know, Baker, I'm kind of thinking in the dynasty sense. Baker's still with young. But this last pick, I'm going to go with Bryce Young. I'm okay. going with Bryce Young. I respect Way to get your back. Wait, you're back in. Last pick in the draft. I'm 20. back in. Hey, top 20. Yeah. Bryce Young, yeah. Uh, he should have made this list. I feel like if this was last year, it would have been much higher, right? Definitely. Probably. I would have went before. He would probably went over Stroud. Gordon who? Probably would have, yeah. Coming if not, he would have been neck yeah. and neck. Not to us. Yeah, but we here. You know what I'm saying? We Stroud guys. Yeah, we're Facts, big, big all right, so you wrote it all down? I did. So you want me to recap? Yeah. Yes. So these are the 20 quarterbacks we would start a franchise with. Number one, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar, Burrow, and Justin Herbert round out the top five. C.J. Stroud, Caleb Williams, Jalen Hurts, Jordan Love, and Trevor Lawrence round out the top 10. Anthony Richardson, Kyler Murray, Matt Stafford, Dak Prescott, and Drake May round out the top 15. Tua kicks us off at pick 16 with Purdy, Goff, Jaden Daniels, and Bryce Young rounding out the list. Tua too low, man. Unfortunately for the older guys, they are better than a lot of these guys in the name. But, you know, we're talking about... Passed on Rodgers. No Justin Fields. Yeah, he's like 42. He was the next guy if I had a six pick. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're taking over Will Levis? Yes. You're 100%. taking him over Kirk? Me? Yes. We did not take Kirk. We didn't fold. You're taking him over Sam Darnold? Bro, yeah. You guys took Tua and Purdy over Kirk. I didn't take Tua. Or sorry, excuse me. You took he both took over both Kirk. Of them. He took both of them. He's still my guy. I'm fine with that. Kirk is coming off an Achilles. That's he's fair. 36. No Anthony, uh, or excuse me, no Aaron Rodgers. That's what he's I said. 30, he's 40. He's 40. You can't really he start a like franchise with a 40 year old. <laughs> I mean, that's, what, that's essentially what's happening with the Jets right now. Yeah, we ain't started though. I mean, he started the career. The start of the franchise with Zach Wilson. So. Stafford's thirty six years old. He give me like four more years of quarterback. Play. I mean, I'll be honest. Four more years though. Uh, if I hope if, he does. He'll play three. If Matt, if half. Matthew Stafford comes out and says this is my last year playing football, I'd believe him. If he gives me two more years, I would be ecstatic. I might have wasted a pick, man. <laughs> That's all right. He was worried about so, the respect. Took him, took him over Dak. I did, I did, because I feel like he's more of a big time game player. You were, you're trying that. to win now. I respect that. Yeah, he is that's great. What, that's what it's all about. But that's going to do it for this episode of the Pick, Pick Aside Podcast, episode 367. Ooh, 100 you coming guys up. can follow us soon uh, on Twitter at Pick Aside Pod. 400 locked in, man. On Instagram and TikTok at Pick Aside Podcast. Thank you guys for watching. We'll going to be live on playback. Don't forget that tomorrow night. Tune we in. Will. Two games. See what you guys watching? next time.